Lafayette College in Easton, Pennsylvania. The Lafayette Sports Network in cooperation with RCN Television, WBPH Channel 60 out of Bethlehem, PA, and the Patriot League Network presents Lafayette College football. The Fordham Rams are in town today. They come in with a one and one record in the league, three and five overall. Lafayette continues its trek through the Patriot League. They come in after a terrific win last week for their first Patriot League win here at uh, Fisher Stadium. It'll be Simpson at the top of your screen, Younger at the bottom of your screen. And a kickoff from Andrew Mevis. Glad you are with us on the Lafayette Sports Network. I doubt if this one will be returned. It will not. And Lafayette will have the football and send out their quarterback, the freshman, Keegan Shoemaker, 6'3", 190. He is number one in a lot of categories, and he's also right now the Patriot League Offensive Player of the Week this past week. He was 23 for 27 last week for 207 yards. He completes 63% of his passes. He's thrown nine touchdowns. He's been intercepted 10 times. The ball is on the Lafayette 25-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see what Lafayette does coming out of the box here. If they try to establish the run, Selwyn Simpson in there right now, we are going to see Jaden Sutton as well. So we'll see what Lafayette's thoughts are here early in the game. Selwyn averaging 3.3 yards per carry. Had a nice run last week for a touchdown. They're going to fire over the middle. That's a good play to start things off as the Doc Scott makes the catch. He is tackled immediately by Austin King, but not immediately enough as that's going to be a Lafayette first down at the 38-yard line, a gain of 13. Well, you take advantage of those aggressive linebackers and Ryan Greenhagen came right downhill from his front side mic position didn't have an opportunity to get back. So a good RPO to start the game and a good delivery there by the freshman quarterback. Zadok Scott is a guy in the middle of the field that can make a difference. Mike talking about Ryan Greenhagen and Glenn Cunningham. They both are outstanding, perhaps the best linebackers in the Patriot League. Lafayette may want to argue that point. Back to throw the ball again, looking to run. And now looking for some running room, trying to get to the edge. He does. Nice job by Keegan. He takes a pretty good lick, however, at the 40-yard line. There is a flag on the play, and it is back in the area of holding. Yeah, right around that 34-yard line. And Lafayette receiver got knocked down. Whalen, who was trying to run a comeback, and he got a holding against Lafayette. So these are really, really tough to come by. Holding, number 60, offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat. First down. So right guard John Burke is the culprit as Lafayette is penalized for the 43rd time this year. Their opponents have been penalized 48 times. Sets the ball back to the 33-yard line. And check that back to the 28-yard uh, line, a 10-yard penalty, and it uh, creates a first and 20. And we talked a lot about Greenhagen and Cunningham, but this defensive line, Ellis Taylor, has got six and a half sacks on the season. They've really come after you up front, just like Lafayette's D-line does as well. Five-man defensive front by Fordham. They hand it to Selwyn Simpson. He's got running room. Selwyn to the 40, to the 45. Stops, he's got the first down, and he'll get run out of bounds. What a nice hole. Opened up, Michael, on that left side. Jake Marotti and Nate Slater on a really good running play on the first one of the ballgame. Lafayette's in hurry up as that's a pickup of 24 yards. Well, they almost set it up kind of like a draw right there, a little pass set. As Selwyn's going to get it again up the middle for a good game, but they really did a nice job. And almost like Lafayette looked like it was a, a pass set type of look to try to draw that defensive line up the field, and then Selwyn just split it was on the free safety. Tackle was made on that play by Mike Marinelli, but a gain of six brings up a second and four, and that pass is just not a good one as it was intended for Stilianos and it was much too far for him to make the catch. Well, they had the right coverage. It was man-to-man, -man, so they had the split coverage there. They had Stilianos running from the slot position to the flat, and I think that defensive end came up the field and just put enough pressure, Diodato put enough pressure into Keegan's face where that ball had to come out a little bit sidearm. So it's gonna be a second and four, the ball on the 42-yard line. Or, or third down, I'm sorry, third down and four. Very important to try to stay on the field here, Lafayette. Keeping the ball is Keegan Shoemaker. He's got the first down and more. He faked the ball to Sutton, and uh, that's a nice play as he's going to go out of bounds at the 27-yard line. A gain of 15 and another first down. Well, similar to that first series we saw last week against Bucknell. This is just that zone read. 
So they get the defensive end coming down hard. Ellis Taylor caught in between no man's land, comes down a step too far, and you can't do that with Keegan Shoemaker. So some design runs early last week, and now this week already we've seen Keegan do it a couple times with his legs. Drive started on the Lafayette 25. It has moved to the Fordham 27-yard line. In the backfield now to run the football is Jaden Sutton's. Instead, it's Shoemaker again, and Keegan's going to get good yardage again. Mike, you always talk about what a great advantage it is to have a running quarterback. He's so hard for the defense to center on. It takes a man out of that defensive unit. The tackle was made by Ryan Greenhagen. Yeah, and a great job there by Sutton. Just got a piece of Greenhagen and Cunningham as he came across as Greenhagen makes the tackle again on the sideline. But you said it, Gary. You have to have a quarterback that has the ability to extend plays, get out of plays. I don't think you want Keegan running the ball a ton, but he offers that with his legs. He'll be in the backfield all by himself. Second and less than a yard to go for a first down. Wants the tight end maybe here, right down the middle. Back to throw. Looking, looking. Going through his progression, he'll throw it away. Not a bad play at all because you've got second and about a half a yard to go, or third now, and about a half a yard to go for the first down. So it was one of those where you could do almost anything. And Lafayette did almost nothing yeah, on well, that play. This is a secondary for Fordham who gives up a lot of yards through the air. It's tough to run the ball on them and to throw it underneath. But if you can get into that secondary, put up a lot of yardage, a lot of these teams have gone down the field. Lafayette's going to now have show you four tight ends on the field. Sutton is in the backfield as they now put the strength on the right side of the offensive line. They'll hand it to Sutton, and Sutton he puts his head down. I don't know. Oh, he'll... He'll, we'll get it as a good second effort here as they will mark the ball, I think, right enough. He got enough. He got just enough. Needed a, less than a yard, and he got about a yard. We talk about blocking surface. Lafayette had four tight ends in there, and they just get enough, like you said. Good job by Nate Slater. Staying low, driving, getting underneath his man. That's a freshman in there. He's played a ton of football. They really like his athletic ability. Only going to get better, but that left guard sitting right in there Next to Lafayette's big uh, offensive uh, center as well, Joe Grunhofer opened up just enough seam for the big back. Selwyn Simpson comes back into the backfield. You got man to man here. And here comes the blitz. They give it to Simpson. And he will get a couple of yards. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 14 yard line. Be a gain of a couple. Tackle was made on the play by Anthony Diodato. Diodato came in with 20 tackles out of Warminster, PA. Second and eight. Now you got to look for Lafayette right here. If they're going to show man to man, which they've done in the red zone right now, bringing both Cunningham and trying to create that negative play with Greenhagen and Cunningham, you've got to look for guys. And I look for a guy big this week to make some plays in Jordan Hull, number four. He's down here at the bottom of your screen. And look for Zadok Scott in the slot as well. In motion as uh, Keegan will roll to his left, trying to run away from. And he does finally throw the ball out of bounds as Imperati was really chasing him down. 6'1", 240-pound junior out of North Haven, Connecticut. And it'll just go down as an incomplete pass. So Keegan not off to a great start throwing the ball. He's one for four for 13 yards. And Fordham gives up 277 yards a game in the air. 448 overall is what that defense gives up. Third and eight. Well, he had Stilianos on the drag route coming across the field. He just couldn't get his shoulders squared up to give it to him. The only guy that was actually open was the backside tight end on the drag here. So we'll see if Lafayette's offensive line can hold up. You don't want to give up a sack here. We're going to get a timeout, I think, called. Timeout, Lafayette. Weren't quite sure what they wanted to do. The so this they is a 30 second timeout. Call a timeout because uh, this is such an important play, third and eight. They're already in field goal range, but obviously they'd like to put six up, Mike, as opposed to just three. Yeah, and you take a look here. You can see some of those offensive linemen. Fordham, very big offensive line as well as Please Lafayette. The defensive the line's very good. So two of the keys today, seconds. two of the keys today are going to be the defensive lines and the pressure. And we've already seen them put some pressure on Keegan here. They're trying to get him outside the pocket, change the uh, the launch site, and uh, so far it's uh, been a little bit ineffective. I I'm looking for some one-on-one. -on -one. You find your best matchup here on the field. And a guy we haven't seen on the field so far is uh, is Nick Pearson. So that's going to be a big loss. He struggled this week, I think, with a foot injury. He's not been on the field yet. 
as you see Jordan Hull's going to be in the slot number four keep your eye on him if they get some man to man they might be able to get a flag route or some sort of seam route here to him that fade from the slot area tough call on a third and eight they give it to Simpson and Selwyn's not going to go anywhere he is going to get hit right at the line of scrimmage as uh, coming up and making a tough hit that time was Ryan Greenhagen Greenhagen leads the team in tackles with 82 of them, 13 tackles for a loss, a couple of sacks. He's number two in the Patriot League in tackles and number three in the Patriot League in tackles for a loss. Well, you know, Fordham studied that film from last year. If you go back last year, Lafayette scored on some third down and longs, running the football and kind of snuck some things in on uh, on Fordham. It's going to be about a 30, 31 yarder. 31 yarder, yep. It's down, the kick is up, and the kick. From here looks pretty good. Down there looks just as good. Throw a 31-yard field goal. Puts the Leopards up on top by a 3-0 score. We'll recap the drive when we come back. That drive, by the way, 61 yards. Took 5 minutes and 20 seconds. 12-play drive. And the Gordon Brock field goal. He is now 7 for 10 on the season in field goal kicks. Back there, we see for Fordham to return the kickoff is 86. That is Dan Burns. Number one in the league, Fordham, in kickoff returns. Stumble, a little bit of a stumble right short, here. And it will be returned by 86. Burns. Ball, And football. there's a ball on the ground. Lafayette has it. I believe it was recovered that by Marco Olivas. Hold everything. Lafayette with a football on the turnover. The hit came from Billy Schaefer, who is, as the coaches say, he's just a football player, and he knocked that ball loose and recovered by Marco Olivas. Well, that ball was so high, and he almost like that stutter step there by Corden Brock. Just kind of threw things off, but watch the hit here by Schaefer. Helmet on the football, ball out, and Marco Olivas again does it defensively, does it on special teams right there, Olivas with the uh, heads up play to jump on that football. So I think the little bit of a stutter by Corden Brock threw off the blocking a little bit. Good job getting down, creating that wall. And like you said, Billy Schaefer with a big time play. Lafayette needs to capitalize right here. I'm looking for something up top right away at the bottom. You look right there, you have uh, Julius Young, a big time player, freshman, and also Zadok Scott. From the 26 yard line of Fordham, back to throw the ball. Shoemaker has some running room and he does a nice job of making that decision. Oh, that's a great decision. He saw a little opening right up the middle. Probably the toughest thing for a quarterback is to step up and not step around. He did that very, very nicely for a good game. Uh, you said it, Gary. Climbing the pocket is the thing. Doesn't have it. Look, one 1,000, two 1,000, three. Doesn't have it. Tucks it away. Two hands on the football. Something we used to see Drew Reed do a lot of a couple of years ago. Two hands on the ball. Drive the pocket up vertically. Good coverage in the secondary. I'm impressed so far with a Fordham secondary that's really had some tough times this, uh, this season. They're playing well early here, not giving Keegan a lot to look at down the field. Simpson in the backfield. It's second and a yard. Not a great snap, but instead the handoff does go to Selwyn Simpson. That's be a first down. He's going to pick up three yards on the carry before he is tackled on the play by Parker Spillers, a linebacker. He's just a fresh ball game. Dadoc Scott down here at the bottom. Looks like Keegan might have changed the play as he's looking over the middle. He's going to fire it out here to Simpson, and that's just a little bit too high. He was covered on the play by Glenn Cunningham, but the pass just a little bit too high for Selwyn to make the catch. Simpson at 6'2", he's a pretty tall dude. Yeah, and again, you don't have Nick Pearson on the field here who has the ability to separate and doesn't have to separate a lot, but get that two or three yards, that move at the top of the route here again. I think you know, Lafayette last time on third down along ran the football here on second and 10. We'll see if they take advantage of some one-on-one -on -one coverage here at the bottom with the freshman. Fake to Simpson, looking, looking, firing. A little out pattern that time run by Julius Young. And the pass was beyond him. Coverage, pretty good coverage by Joe Ferraro. Or check it on the other side. It is, uh, no, yeah, number 10. Normally uh, a wide receiver. I think they have two a couple tens, tens there. in yeah, there. That's yeah, Cameron Blair. They called it Joe Ferraro on the last speaker, too. I think that's Cameron Blair. But uh, yeah, they have a couple a of duplicate numbers. numbers, but that's not one they gave us. Yeah, so Lafayette again faced with a third down and long the first time in the red zone. Now they're usually one of the best teams. In fact, they are the best red zone team in the Patriot League. Got to find maybe the tight end down the seam here. 
They give it to Simpson. Can he's he get room. the corner? He's got a good block in front of him, too. Oh, what a great job by Marotti. That's a touchdown, yes, Lafayette. Jake Marotti with a terrific block downfield. That is going to be a 19, making a 14-yard touchdown run for Selwyn Simpson. Wow, he did it last year to Fordham, but he gets to the corner, and a big guy like that can turn on the juice, but the blocking is all about the blocking scheme. Look at Marotti get out in front. A great job by Taggart. Look at Marotti just kind of roll that corner into the end zone and give Taggart a lot of credit, too. He sealed the edge and then allowed Marotti. It's called an eat out. In other words, you get the end down, tackle around. We call that an eat out block. Down, around, Marotti, the big man outside. Just like last week, don't you love you get a turnover and you take advantage of it. The Leopards go the 26 yards after the recovery by Olivas, the hit by Schaefer. And they now have themselves a 9-0 lead, looking to make it 10 from Cordon Brock. Great opportunity for Lee Sedic Gary. Taking advantage of those things. Snap, hold, kick. That kick is up. The kick is good. And Gordon Brock has had a good PAT year. He is 16 for 16. The drone shows you Fisher Stadium. Now the turnover. Boom. And that leads right to a Selwyn Simpson touchdown around the edge on the left side. Look at Marotti downfield. 10 0 Lafayette. We'll be back. They have taken Dan Burns out of the mix to receive this kickoff. Naeem Mayfield, 21, and Fotis Kokosoulis is back there, but the kick is short, and it is going to be fielded. A fair catch was called for by Ricardo Alanio, and uh, that will finally get the uh, Fordham offense out on the field as they'll mark uh, the ball at the 29-yard line, it looks like. Yeah, Lafayette coming out, and, and this is interesting. You see Eric Mitchell, he's going to be to the top. We want to keep an eye on the corners today. Romeo Weichel, that safety, is going to play the weak side's uh, a boundary corner here. And uh, again, for Lafayette, the freshman in there, Deron Gilbert at free safety. Sophomore quarterback Tim DeMarat is a 6'4", 210-pound quarterback. That's their man, though, Zach Davis, 5'10", 200-pound junior. That's rushed for 861 yards, 5.9 per carry as he is tackled on the play by Ian, uh, Ian Grayson. And the gain is to the 32, a gain of three. Yeah, the interesting thing about that offensive line for them, they've had four of their five starters play every single game for Ford of this year as you get a look at the starting quarterback and running that there, DeMarat and Davis again. Here he comes. Davis had 185 yards against Lehigh. That's a good hit that time by Marco Olivas, but the first one to come up and hit him was Major Jordan, and that slowed him down a little bit. And the gain here will be to the 33. That's a gain of just a yard. Yeah, you like linebacker play? Today's the day to come to Fisher Stadium. you got some of the best linebackers for Lafayette, Dickens, and Jordan, and Olivas. And on the other side, we've already mentioned uh, both Cunningham and Greenhagen a ton of time. So five of the best linebackers you're going to see. And don't take Billy Schaefer out of it. He's already caused a fumble today. Passing situation for Dima Ratt. He Completes 57 percent of his passes. He's thrown for over 1,600 yards. Showing blitz there, Gary. Sorry to interrupt you, but they're showing blitz and they're changing the play. Back to throw. De Marat. De Marat steps up. He's going down. As Lafayette gets there, the first one. It is Malik Ham that gets there to get his fourth sack of the year. His seventh tackle for a loss. It's a loss of three, and Fordham will have to punt the ball away. Well, you know, this kid, he's just kind of building to have a big, big Patriot League finish. And he had three sacks last year. You see that little twist inside. So you get the tackle working outside. You get Malik coming underneath. So Lafayette with a different scheme there showing, covering all five offensive linemen and a chance to get the football back here. Mevis punts the ball away. And back to receive it. No fair catch call. It is 84. Aziz Dia Diamande. We're going to call timeout and see we make sure we have the right guy recover receiving that punt. Stay with us. Immediate. We are back and we uh, did find out a number change was made and uh, receiving that punt was Chris Webb for Lafayette. Chris Webb is out of only Maryland, a 6'1", 195 pound freshman. And uh, he showed some courage there. I yes, thought he, he might did. be calling for a fair catch. He didn't do that. The ball's on the 24. Beautiful punt, too, by Nevis. Turned it over, got it all the way down there. Webb did a good job fielding it. It was a 47-yard punt. Yeah, it's going to be interesting here. You've got a lot of freshman wide receivers today. We've got a ton playing for Lafayette, a ton on the other side playing for Fordham. And 
The question is, which offensive line is going to step up? I think so far, the Lafayette offensive line has done a nice job running the football. And if we can put pressure as a defensive line, adding in some linebackers against the Fordham team that's given up 26 sacks this year, that was the big change in the game last year. Lafayette just could, was all over the Murata quarterback. Jaden Sutton in the backfield for this series to start it with uh, Keegan Shoemaker. Keegan doesn't have all of his weapons available catching the football. He's just one for six, but he's done a great job with his legs so far. First and 10 from the 24. Get in that pistol formation with Sutton back there. Going to play action. Keegan here. looking deep. Instead, he'll fire underneath in the gap. And that's a really nice throw as the ball was caught by Zadok Scott, tackled on the play by Austin King, and Lafayette's going to be in a hurry up. They'll take it up to the 42. That's a gain of 18 yards. And again, just a great play, executed well. you got linebackers coming downhill. Good move by Sutton. Sutton with a nice hole, too, again on that left side as he'll get the ball right to midfield. Or are they going to... Nope. Back at the 49, again a seven. And watch Sutton keep his eyes up as he gets the handoff here. You got pressure coming in Greenhagen on the blitz. So they've really sent a couple of linebackers now on first down against Lafayette, trying to get that tackle for a loss. This is the team that leads the league in tackles for losses. But Lafayette right now is up to the task up front in that offensive line picking it up. You got a chance to see what Simpson did so far in the ball game. And now they've gone to Sutton. That ball thrown downfield, and is there going to be a penalty flag? There is, as uh, inhibiting the intended receiver, Julia Spigner, was number 20, James Biggs Frazier, the free safety. That's a good call. Yeah, and, and that's a good matchup as well for Lafayette. You got the six foot three Spigner against the smallest DB they have on defense, and that's James Big Frazier, like you said. I think he got hands, almost hands to the face, might be the call instead of interference. Holding. Holding. Defense number 20. That falls against an eligible receiver. That's an automatic first down. So it'll end up getting the ball to the 41 yard line, a 10 yard penalty. Lafayette's had a really nice game plan so far in the first nine minutes of the game. They've attacked the middle of the field here with Zadok Scott. They've taken some shots down the sideline as well. What they got to avoid here is the penalty and the uh, the execution of any type of tackle for loss. Everybody's got to be on the same page as well. Pearson, I think, in the game at the top now. They're blitzing and keeping the ball. Again, a good decision by Keegan Shoemaker. That's a good open field tackle, too, on him as Fordham was blitzing on the play, coming up to make that tackle is Biggs Frazier, who just had the holding call against him, a gain of a yard. Yeah, again, Lafayette just throwing in that design quarterback read, that zone read play here, so we'll see. Let's let's take a look at it. And probably should have given that one off with the defensive ends now staying home, and he's gotten burned a couple times, Ellis Taylor, but that time he stayed home, and that's probably one Keegan should have left in the belly of Jaden Sutton. I think he recognized the blitz was coming, and that may have made his decision for him. Good pocket, gets rid of it just in time, drops the ball down to the 35-yard line, a flag on the play, and it's in the area of holding. That was thrown right in that area there. You wonder, now Slater's talking about maybe hands to the face. You wonder if one of those defensive linemen, I think it's going to be against... Fordham here with some, you know, you get your hand up above into the face guard or up into the face mask, that is a penalty. Personal foul, hands Good to the call. face, number 92 defense. That 15 yard penalty be assessed from the end of the run, automatic first down. So Zadok Scott makes the catch at the 35, so a gain of five on the pass play, and then tack on another 15. Yeah, right there, you saw it right on the inside. That was Anthony Diodato. Just got his hands up in the face of the freshman Slater, or might have been Burke that time. Lafayette's offensive line doing a really nice job sliding their feet, staying in front of people, and that's what you want to do. You got to be athletic. You know, linemen today, Gary, are not guys that you just put out there and become road graders. They got to be very, very nimble on their feet, and guys like Runhofer and Burke, and obviously Gavin Barkley, one of the best. Third catch by Zadok Scott so far in the ball game. As we get a first and 10, back, they're going for it all, down in the corner of the end zone, and it's going to be just a little bit wide. Julius Young was the intended receiver as coverage was supplied down there by number 10, and that is uh, Cameron Blair. And I like the play call, though. This is Keegan, though. He's got to keep this ball in the field of play. No chance 
for uh, for the receiver to make a play here. Watch, this ball is just going to fade right out of bounds. No chance there. He's got to throw that ball a hair earlier and get it over the top as soon as you get stacked on top. And that time Julius Young, the freshman, was stacked on top of the DB. Second and 10 from the 20. Almost jumping off sides, Fordham, but getting back. Fired out here, and that will be caught, but Jaden had to fall down to catch it. So he'll pick up five yards, unable to do any yards after the catch, and it's going to bring up a third and five. Well, these are those situations where uh, Coach John Garrett has gone to some running plays on third down and five. They ran it on third and eight. They ran it for a touchdown, a 14-yard touchdown on third down and ten. Again, you got to look across the field, get a good pre-snap read. I like getting out of the huddle here early. Get a good read. You got a two deep shell here. Find the possibility of where your best uh, option is. And I think it's going to be down the seam, down the middle of the field. Fordham is blitzing, picked up by Jaden Sutton. And that's a good play as it's caught by Julian Spigner. And they're going to give him the first down, I believe, as he gets to the 10 yard line. It's a gain of five. Nice job by Jaden Sutton to pick up the blitz. Yeah, picking up so important for all guys to be on the same page. And to have a freshman that understands, uh, watch him step up here understands protections to know that the offensive line in that situation was turning and, and fanning to the field he's the guy that's got to pick up inside linebacker to outside linebacker the inside linebacker stayed he fanned out picked up the blitz and like you said Gary give Spigner a lot of credit too for knowing where the sticks were and he did just that he got it right to where he had to go as it's first and goal to go now from the 10 yard line Almost falling down, Shoemaker. Now he's looking for a guy in a maroon shirt. He's got him, and it's a touchdown. Grabbed by Julius Young as he crosses the goal line. As that will be a Lafayette score, the sixth completion of the ball game for Keegan Shoemaker, his 10th touchdown pass. Well, he stumbled coming out of the gate, almost like a racehorse coming stumbling out of the gate. Watch him here. He almost ends up on his face here. He gets stepped on by Slater, the backside guard. And if you look, he had Linda, who put his man to sleep under the goalpost wide open. Didn't think he was going to throw to Julius Young, but he laid it in there just behind almost a back shoulder play and a big time play by the freshman how about the freshman getting his first lafayette touchdown of his career shoemaker's 10th touchdown pass and another extra point by jeff cordenbrock well the leopards are clicking on all cylinders as they lead right now with 236 to go in the first period by a 17 nothing score a 76 yard drive eight plays shoemaker to young for the touchdown take another look at it well, again, take a look at the back. Watch him stumble coming out here, but the back of the end zone, Jake Litka is wide open, but Julius Young did a nice job separating from his man. And again, this is a secondary for Fordham that struggled all year long. Give Julius a lot of credit. He probably thinks he should have had the fade for a touchdown, but he comes back, catches the drag. Good body thing, body there. Lafayette has a number of terrific young wide receivers. You got Jordan Hull, you got Julius Young, all young guys making plays. Our starting lineups, uh, as they always are, as you get another nice look of, at the uh, Fisher Stadium from afar. And our Leopard will tell you that the starting lineups are brought to you and prepared by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Here's some scores for you. Lehigh is trailing Holy Cross 7-0 at the end of one. Colgate and Georgetown are tied at 7-7. That ball game coming to a at the end of the first period. Fordham's have moved both their uh, their returners way up to the 15-yard line because Lafayette's showing a lot of pooch kicks. It's going to come down to uh, Niam Mayfield. Mayfield has it, and he will get decent field position at the 32 or 33. Tackled on the play by Dylan Crossan, another Lafayette freshman. Yeah, good adjustment there by the Fordham kickoff return team to move up their returners, get the ball in their hands. They didn't want to have to fair catch that football, but so far, Corden Brock has uh, kind of game plan to throw it up nice and high and keep them inside the 30. So pretty decent field position here from Fordham, but such a lack of plays, only three plays so far today. Lafayette has run 25, they have run three. Movement, I think. And we got movement, it's gonna be play. Fordham is in a bit of a funk right now, and let's hope they stay in it, moving for them before the snap was okay. Austin Glazier. Number 72, five-yard penalty remains first down. Well, the official called it on Lucas Portis, the left guard. Anthony Morelli, uh, 
Marinelli's in there now too, the senior. He's in at right guard for, uh, looks like for Will Connolly, they moved Austin Blazer out to the tackle position. So back to the 27 yard line, carrying the ball is Davis. And Zach Davis finds a little bit of a seam. He'll get the penalty back and pick up another yards besides as uh, the tackle is made by Keith Earl. Gain of six. Yeah, Keith Earl's done a nice job. You know, Keith Earl started in this 3-4 as a stand-up outside linebacker, but with the injuries Lafayette's had, he's come down to the defensive end position. I think he enjoys putting his hand in the dirt and beating offensive tackles up the field. Here he comes again. Malik Ham almost got to the quarterback, but the Marat finally completes his first pass of the ball game, complete to Dekees Carter, his 26th catch, tackled by Romeo Weichel, but the gain up to the 46 is a pickup of 13. Yeah, nice RPO right there. and. Uh, you know, DeMarat's a guy that uh, has, can put up the yardage here. He put it in the belly, pulled it out. Good coverage by Romeo Weichel. But you can see, again, these quarterbacks, they try to find a little bit of tempo in this offense. And uh, you see Fordham here just kind of struggling to get aligned. But they need to get some tempo in their offense as well. That's their first first down of this football game. It took them 13 minutes and 27 seconds to get it. Here comes Davis. Davis puts his head down, barrels into a whole bunch of Leopards. A pack of leopards in there. Malik Cam, I see, is part of it. He also coming in was Marco Olivas. Also in there was Ian Grayson. And there'll be a gain of three. Now, this is where Lafayette, I think they can turn up the heat a little bit here. They've shown the blitz early on that first uh, drive. Got to uh, to Demarat by uh, Malik Cam, but Lafayette again right now showing a little bit of nickel defense here, expecting to throw the football. Demarat, one step drop, he's getting pressure. He'll just simply throw the ball away. As coming in all over him was Malik Cam. He's going to get to know Malik pretty well. He, even on the pass completion, Malik gave him a pretty good shot. <laughs> well, he got to know him last year a little bit. Getting up. Outside the tackle box. Incomplete pass, third down. Yeah, but a little bit of a problem there offensive line-wise with the protection. You can't, I don't think you want to not block Malik coming in. <laughs> I agree, I agree. But, uh, In fact, Tim Murat, he'll, he'll second that motion. <laughs> Another opportunity here. These are the situations you want young wide receivers in if you're Lafayette's defense. Third down and long. See if they play zone or they bring some pressure here to try to get the ball out quick. They have to get to the 44-yard line. Demarat back. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to fire downfield, and I think that's a good catch as the ball will be caught by DeKeese Carter. And Carter made sure he stayed in bounds as they'll mark it right at the 30-yard line, a 21-yard pickup. Yeah, Lafayette lost a little contain there, allowed De Morant, the right-handed quarterback, to get out to his right. So they pinned Ryan Barnett inside here. And I wonder if John's going to take another look at that just to make sure he was in bounds. It looked like he had his right foot down. First and 10 from the 30. Back, flipping it out here, and that's going to be incomplete. That was intended for Mayfield, I believe. No, 82 it was. It was uh, Fotis Kokosoulis, Mike's favorite name on this roster. Yeah, Kokosoulis, he's the guy. He leads this team in receptions, leads them in yardage. That was just a little bubble screen, blockers out in front, and the ball in a position where probably Kokosoulis should have caught that football, but it brings up second and 10. And I expect Lafayette to bring some pressure here. I think they're going to try to turn up the heat a little bit, try to keep this quarterback in the box. Last week they did lose contain a few times against the Bucknell quarterback. He has not run for much, minus 34 yards. Finally looking over and finds a wide open receiver in Joe Ferraro, and Ferraro will get it down to the 10-yard line before he is tackled by Marco Olivas, and that'll be a gain of 20, first and goal to go. Yeah, nice protection up front. Lafayette just put no pressure on the quarterback. Malik Cam was out of the game for that play, but when you get that much time, take a look at it right here. The ability to step up, drive, look for somebody to cross the middle of the field. That is the end. That's a good job by that offensive line. We'll be back. First quarter in the book. It's all Leopards at the moment. 17-0. We are back. Lest you get too comfortable sitting at home with a 17-0 lead. Mike, this is a ball club, Fordham, that notoriously this year has started slowly. They are only getting three points per first quarter. And when you look overall, 165 points scored by the opponent to 75 by Fordham in the first half. Yeah, amazing. Just giving, you know, losing the first half by 90 points. They're a much better second half team. 
They've scored 117 points in the second half and only given up 92, so a little bit more of an average, but only 27 points in that first quarter. They bump that up to 48, and they get better with every quarter, up to 52 in the third quarter and 65. Doesn't seem like a lot, but they are slow starters, but this is a Fordham offense that's number one in the Patriot League in total offense. Well, they're trying to crank their offense up right now. This drive started on their own 32. They're down at a first and goal to go at the Lafayette 10-yard line. Davis in the backfield. Davis will get the football in the edge. Watch out. As he uses a straight arm, he's going to go the 10 yards for the touchdown. So Fordham comes right out in the first play of the second quarter and picks up a 10-yard touchdown run by Zach Davis, his sixth touchdown of the year. Yeah, he got to the edge, and he almost looked like he wanted to bounce that as soon as he got the football. It looked like maybe they got away with a hold. Watch the left side here on the tight end on the outside, just grabbing a little bit of cloth, not enough to cause the flag there, but you saw Jake Lynch, or Jack Lynch, the left tight end there, just making a good block, just enough, and the speed you saw there of Zach Davis to get to the edge. So that took two minutes and 42 seconds, that drive, as they go the 68 yards in eight plays. The extra point by Mavis is up. He's got a leg, that young man, and he puts it through. And we have a 17-7 football game, so immediately Fordham gets the job done in the second period on just one play. We'll be back. This is a media timeout. All right, ready to kick it off. Selwyn Simpson is back there along with J.J. Younger to receive the kickoff by Andrew Mevis. As the Leopards now uh, hoping to answer a Fordham touchdown. Oh, certainly would love yeah. to keep your momentum offensively. Yeah, I've done a good thinking, job. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. you, you got to get a good kickoff return here. Set your offense up with some decent field position. Even if you don't go down and score, this is a Fordham offense that you want to make them go the length of the field. You don't want to give them a short field. You can't turn the football over. You can't be running it back here, have some sort of a holding or block in the back. Everybody's got to do their job. It's important for Lafayette on this drive to kind of flip field position and hopefully get some points. Nevis put his first kick off into the end zone. He's got a strong leg. This one. Is going to put into the end zone, and uh, Selwyn Simpson says, I'll have no part of that, along with J.J. Younger. And the ball will come out to the 25-yard line, where Lafayette will start first and 10. Well, Lafayette has been pretty balanced today, running and throwing the football. They've kind of kept the Fordham defense a little off balance, run it when they think they're going to throw it, and throw it when they think they're going to run it. But uh, they need positive yardage on first down. This Lafayette offense goes, it gets tempo, when their first down plays are good. And, you know, you're going to struggle if you don't have a guy to take the top off the defense like a Nick Pearson today. And they are without him as well, as John mentioned on the sideline there, Harrison Greenhill defensively. You saw how comfortable Keegan Shoemaker got after going one for six to start the ball game. So right now he is six for 12, 55 yards. And they quickly get the ball out of here as uh, coming up immediately to make the tackle on Simpson is uh, number 47, Ryan Greenhagen. Selwyn Simpson with the reception, and it'll be a gain of four. Boy, Greenhagen and uh, Cunningham, boy, they run sideline to sideline. You wonder what this defense would be like without them, but Selwyn Simpson is a design play. You're getting Selwyn out. you got blockers out in front, throwing a little bit behind the line of scrimmage, but again, the sideline to sideline play of those two linebackers, very, very good. Simpson alternating uh, so far today with Jaden Sutton. Simpson back in there. Good protection. Now it breaks down. There was certainly plenty of time, but no downfield, nobody open. And Ryan Greenhager comes in to get his third sack of the ball of the uh, season back to the 22 yard line. So that was more a coverage sack than anything else, a loss of seven. Yeah, well, it was actually picked up pretty well. Watch Selwyn step across and pick it up right there. But the initial blow that Greenhagen just gets his legs going, Selwyn gets back on his back foot a little bit. But that's a ball right there where the blitz is coming that Keegan has to know, I got to get the ball out. So that's really not on the offensive line. It was picked up. Everybody had the proper guy. And Lafayette now faced with a third down and long here. If you're Keegan and you don't have it, you got to be willing to punt this football away and live another down. And obviously the Leopards are missing Nick Pearson as Selwyn gets outside, but he's not going to get anywhere near a first down as uh, coming up and finally finally putting him down, Jonathan Coste, the nose guard, out of Queens, New York. And uh, the gain is a gain of eight, but well shy of a first down. Yeah, again, you go back to that second down play there, Lafayette 
trying to get the ball down, intermediate throws down the field, but Ryan Greenhagen just spoiled that. The blitz, they've done that a couple times. Lafayette's got to be aware. You're going to pick it up. You've got to be willing to get rid of the football, and Keegan took the sack. The negative play causes the punt. Mayfield should be back there to receive the punt, the first Lafayette punt of the football game. And it comes from Ryan O'Hara. And a fair catch is called for at the 34 yard line. We'll call timeout, a 36 yard punt. Come on back. And uh, we talked about Fordham getting better each quarter. We'll see what they do here on first down. So important to pick up yardage. Lafayette on their drive, a three and out, but they picked up decent yardage on first and second down. On first down, then lost eight yards on second down. Tough to do when you put yourself behind the sticks. Get our first look at Trey Sneed. He's got the football. Trey Sneed, the backup running back, 310 yards, 4.2 per carry. He gets tackled on the play by Billy Schaefer. Some help from Major Jordan. The gain is up to the 44, so he gets 10 yards on his first carry. Yeah, both running backs kind of break into the edge, something Lafayette might want to take a look at. You know, you're going to seal the edge right there. You've got to have those five technique tackles. And Lafayette now looking at more of a four-man off a defensive line with the linebacker Dickens up in the box. Need again. Need this time a boy shakes off a couple of guys down and around his ankles. He'll fall forward to the 50 yard line uh, hit by Keith Earl. He'll pick up six. And again, good pickup on first down. You can see this offense getting a little bit of tempo. Two good running backs and Lafayette's got two of them on their side. Now you see the quickness of Sneed in between the guards right there. He's a young man out of Florida. 5'11", 215, and a junior. Second and four, he's got it again. So they have decided that they're going to run the ball at Lafayette. That is their forte. They get 167 yards a game. They finally blow the whistle, although bodies are still moving. Looked like Billy Schaefer was the first one there to make the contact. A first down, the ball in Lafayette territory, a gain of six. And Lafayette switching up some defensive linemen, bringing in a whole new unit. Curlbrink going to be on the nose, and Ryan Barnett at the top. So Lafayette using six or seven defensive linemen, just trying to stay fresh. And, and you said it, Gary, Fordham wants to get back in the game. you got to stay committed to certain things, and they run the ball well. It's what they're known for. The play-action pass comes off of that. This time, it's DeMarat who keeps the football. He's going deep. He's got a man wide open. Downfield, and it's going to be broken up in the last second. Making up some yardage was Yazir Thomas. He was beaten. He was beaten by about four yards. The pass just a hair underthrown, Mike. Yeah, play action pass. And, and right at the top of the route, you got the stutter from uh, El, El Ziat right there. And then, like you said, Great job, though, by the senior, keeping his eyes on the eyes of the receiver. And then as the hands came up from El Zarat, he just stuck his hand in there, knocked it away, did not interfere. So Lafayette, pretty good against the splash plays lately in the last couple games. So it's second and 10, not going anywhere this time. Carrying the football is Snead, and there to make the tackle is uh, Ryan Barnett, along with Malik Ham. I think Malik Ham is the guy that wrestled him down as there'll be a loss of a yard on the play, and it brings up a big third and 11. And yeah, another good play there by Malik. That is huge, similar to Lafayette. You know, you get that second down and long, and you get a play to get a tackle for a loss. Now, racking up the sacks and the tackles for losses, they're going to have Malik on the nose. I think that's a great place for Malik to rush from. He can come out of that. He can wrap around somebody, a little game inside. But to put him on the nose guard, is a big time play there for Lafayette happening. Fordham is one for two so far on third down plays. They're 35% on the season. And a big play by Fordham, so they're gonna call a timeout, timeout. right here. Fordham, this is their first timeout. That's the their half. first timeout the of the half. Timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. And here we go from the 45 yard line, third and 11. Lafayette, last time only rushed three guys here. See if they add an extra guy. They're going to at the top. DeMarat, he's getting some pressure. He's going to go down. Great job of making sure he can't throw the football by wrapping up his right arm. As coming in to make the tackle is going to be Marco Olivas. How about Marco Olivas? What a freshman year he is having. That is his third sack of the season. Three and a half tackles for a loss. And at least his 47th, 48th, 49th 
tackle of the year. Well, they're going to add him in. Watch him right here at the left of your screen. He comes in, he takes on, actually bull rushes the offensive tackle that time in Likas Portis and just does a great job getting by him, attacking half the man. And that's what we talked about on Inside the Huddle, getting to the quarterback. Mevis does all of the punting, and this will be fair caught. By number 84, Chris Webb will be back. Lafayette has the football, but it's on their own seven-yard line. All right, let's take a look, Mike, at uh, Lafayette's defense in action. Yeah, watch the top of your screen right here. So they're going to go down, down, and you see Bleak Cam. He puts the initial pressure and makes Demarat step up in the pocket. And then you saw the ability of a guy like Marco Olivas. I mean, you can't say enough about the kid. Comes on the blitz. Not, if you stand next to Marco, he's not 240 pounds. I mean, he's a guy probably tipping the scale right now, a lot less than he came in. But he has the ability to get those long arms out. And then what I talked about on Inside the Huddle is violently disengage, get off the block. And today the Leopards are doing that. John Gay is in the backfield now for the Leopards for the first time. He wears number 46. Averaging 3.6 yards per carry. He's got a couple of touchdowns. John Gay has the football. Boy, you can see a little space there. The only one in a white shirt waiting for him was James Biggs Frazier. He does make the tackle at the 13-yard line, a gain of six. You see both defensive lines taking away the inside gaps as you get a good look at Gay. And early in the season, he's got great speed. Watch it right there. You see good job on the backside by the tight end, just kind of washing people down. So both defensive lines are committed to taking away the A and B gaps. That's why you see so many running backs bouncing things to the outside right now. Good pickup there on first down. Second and four from the 13. Again, showing blitz, back to throw, and running away from the problems. Now looking to make something happen. Keegan Shoemaker can't quite get to the sticks. As uh, closing in on him was uh, Parker Spillers, and the officials are going to mark it at the 14, so that's a gain of just a yard. Yeah, he tried to get outside the box, and, and Fordham right now is just bringing Ryan Greenhagen in almost every passing situation. They are taking him and running him dead straight through the A or the B gap. Lafayette's done a pretty good job with their backs picking it up, but it's causing a lot of time for Keegan to find a receiver down the field. So don't be surprised here. Just keep your eye on that front side linebacker again, 47. They brought a linebacker in here to the other side. Now it's Cunningham. Back to throw, looking, firing, has a man, it's a first down, it's a big first down, and lumbering downfield, and getting away from another tackler. A great play as the ball is caught by 89, Steve Stiliatos, and Stiliatos turns it into a big play to the 49-yard line in Fordham territory, a 37-yard pickup. And there's that splash play. Look at Lafayette right back on the ball, going with tempo, trying to get the ball out. Keegan will keep. He's going to get good yardage. He'll run himself out of bounds and pick up about four or five yards. Let's go back to the pass play. Yeah, look at the accuracy. That's what makes the play. The ball's thrown out in front. It's man-to-man -man coverage. It's a missed tackle at the point of attack. And like you said, I don't know if Stilionis has run that that far, probably since he was a high school quarterback. Remember, that kid came in as a quarterback, and every week he looks like he's getting bigger and stronger. And he made a big, big splash play to get the ball across the 50. Lafayette here. I think they need to take their time. You don't want to give the ball back. Remember, Fordham can get that double possession. you got to control the clock here as well. They're going to get the ball coming out of halftime. Lafayette handicapped a little bit the absence of Pearson in the ball game, Revere in the ball game, and Gillette in the ball game. Their receiving core has been depleted. As Shoemaker makes a good decision to get rid of that football, pressure was being supplied by Ryan Greenhagen. He's made some good decisions today to get out of the pocket and get rid of the football, not throw the ball into harm's way, but again, pretty good coverage down the field. Even the play that Stilianos make, as you get a good look at Keegan Shoemaker there, the player of the week, again, offensively in the Patriot League. He's gotten that award a couple times this year as well as the rookie of yes, the week. Yes, he has. I thought he'd be rookie of the week, too, this year, this <laughs> week, but he was. And he was 23 for 27 last week, 207 yards and a touchdown in Lafayette's win over uh, Bucknell. Lafayette with an empty backfield set looking to kind of spread things out. They don't need a lot. They will get enough as uh, Jake Taggart makes that catch. Taggart at the 30-yard line. He is tackled on the play on a nice slant pattern. Glenn Cunningham 
with the tackle. That's a 14-yard gain, yeah. first down. Good pickup by the offensive line again. Just watch him just set in there. Look at Marathi. When Marathi's healthy, he's the best left tackle in the league by far. No question. He just sets there. Jake Taggart, you know, he's more of an inline blocker. Stilianos was the guy that was going down the field catching passes. But, you know, using Jake Taggart in the middle of the field has become a real big thing. Seven different receivers here in the first half. Here comes the blitz, and it's going to be intercepted as Shoemaker just tried to drop it into the ground. Instead, he drops it into the uh, stomach of Diodato as Anthony Diodato comes up with his first interception of the year, and it stops the Leopard drive. Well, it was a screen. It was a screen to the left side. And again, Lafayette, if any trouble in this first half, it's been handling the, uh, the uh, straight dead blitzes by both Greenhagen and Cunningham. They've been in the backfield. They've gotten picked up a few times, but that's a big mistake there by the freshman. you got to throw that ball into the ground straight down that time he tried to loft it over to john gay they were trying to set up a screen and again it opened everything up in the middle for cunningham just to run right through and get the keegan and cause the turnover it was glenn cunningham who was coming unabated as they say and he got right into the stomach of shoemaker there's a quail as that ball was not thrown very well no spiral there intended for to carter and it falls incomplete See Fordham trying to get right back on top, take advantage of what we call sudden change. Trying to get that defense a little bit falling asleep. They went to a zone coverage, Lafayette, and they had two receivers, one down the sideline and one down the hash mark, and it gets three deep. That's what you want to do. See if Lafayette here on second and ten, maybe try to get to that quarterback. They've been in Demarat's face a couple times. Zach Davis will get the football, and Davis will get popped maybe after he got a yard, a yard and a half at best. Tackled by uh, number 97 in there. That's Ryan Barnett. He's had a good season. The senior out of Chatham, New Jersey. Again, really nothing there. Again, stuffing up the A gap and the B gap. And when the ball starts to bounce, getting off of blocks. Nice job by Ryan Barnett to disengage from the offensive tackle and make a play by keeping his outside arm free. Lafayette needs a big time sack here. Put up more pressure. Lafayette looks like they're going to bring some heat. Six guys up on the line of scrimmage. Third and eight. If they stay there or if they back out, they're going to back, back out, out. the zone. A little stunt that time. That's going to be a completed pass for a first down. Trying to stun in there was Keith Earl. He got picked up by the offensive line as the ball was caught by Hamzi El Zayat. He is tackled on the play by Romeo Weichel. The gain to the 47 is a gain of 15 and a first down. Yeah, good patience in there by Dean Morat just to sit down and you see. Ryan Dickens, got to get a little bit wider. Got to find the receivers in your zone. Once you drop out, you start from the line of scrimmage. And the ball off, carrying it is Zach Davis. And Davis is tackled on the play by Yazir Thomas with some help from Marco Olivas. And the gain is to the 40-yard line, a gain of seven. And this Ford, you just kind of feel like they're getting some traction offensively. And if they can find something, you know, they, they take a couple shots down the field and one big play by Yasir Thomas to make up some cushion and make up some ground. Otherwise, they'd have another touchdown As on we the board. earlier, that's their M.O. They get better offensively as the game progresses. This time they hand the ball off, and Davis trying to jump forward for a first down. I'm not sure they're going to give it to him, though. I think he's going to be just shy. Tackle by Major Jordan. Yeah, he's going to be short. Probably might, might even measure this one here. It's going to be third down at about probably about 10, 12 inches length of a football. These are situations where Lafayette has been pretty good. And, you know, if, you, if Fordham right now, if you're planning on trying to get back in this ball game and put touchdowns on the board, you got two downs here. This could be a waste down, some one-on-one -on -one coverage. So be a little careful in the defensive secondary. They don't waste it. They give it to Davis, and I don't know. He lost a half a I yard. I think he did lose about a half a yard. Coming in on fourth down now, they are successful 56% of the time. On third down, they're successful just 35% of the time. Now that was Major Jordan coming underneath. Look at Major Jordan right there. Makes a really nice play. The linebackers that we showed for Fordham and for Lafayette are standing out today. Jordan, Olivas, obviously Greenhagen, and Cunningham forcing the turnover. 3.45 to go in the first half. Big fourth down play. And nowhere. Oh, my. How about the penetration by the Lafayette Leopards? First one in there was number 33, Ryan Dickens.
seconds. He messed that whole play up, and then some help from Malik Ham to end the play. Yeah, Lafayette went after it. They just came down, down, pinching. Everybody coming down, making sure there are no inside seams, trying to bounce the ball. Watch the left side of your screen right there, Malik Ham. Ryan Dickens, it was all Malik Ham coming underneath the A-gap. Dickens again, very good on the backside. Excellent job there by Dickens and Ham just to penetrate. That's what you want to do on third down. And I tell you what, Fordham got to rethink that play calling. I think third down and short could have been a shot play or at least something maybe outside the pocket. Big, big turn of events there for Lafayette to get the football back. Leopards would love to put another touchdown on the board here. Selwyn Simpson. He just uh, gets slowed down and then doesn't get anything. He does get tackled out of bounds. Uh, no flag there. Tackle uh, was by 29. Parker Spillers, 46, may have hit him a little bit late. But uh, no game. It's the third time that Fordham has kind of tackled people out of bounds on the Lafayette sideline with no call. So keep your eye on that there. And uh, Lafayette goes with the run on first down. Again, I think they really got to control the clock here. You want to make sure that you leave no time on the clock for Fordham to go back down the field. Pick up one first down here, and you can put this, uh, this half away and try to get some points. Keegan hands the ball up. Simpson cut, cut back, and he's going to be just a yard shy of a first down as he gets to the 49-yard line. Tackle on the play by number 20, and that is James Biggs Frazier. And a big third down now for Lafayette. You see it. Selwyn Simpson going to the sideline, getting stretched out a little bit. Watch this nice cut right here. Boom, bang, bang. Keeps his shoulders down. Really nice job. So important here. Again, let the clock run. Use the clock here. Third down and one. Pick up this first down. Like to see Keegan under the center here, but it looks like they're going to put him in the shotgun. Again, this is a situation where Lafayette, you know, defensively had a lot of penetration. Got to be aware of the linebackers. And here comes Cunningham right in that front side A gap. They're going to throw, throw it. for it. And they're going to go down deep. They've got a man. Oh, what a nice catch. Over the shoulder grab by uh, Lafayette's the Doc Scott. That's a tough catch. Is he a tight end or is he a wide receiver? Which he's, is he? You know what? I don't even call him either one. He's a mismatch is what he is. I mean, he's a hybrid. You got him on a linebacker or even a safety, and he's a guy that can just go up and get it. And Lafayette takes a shot there on the third down okay. and short, and another good pickup. You bring in Jaden Sutton here, a strong runner inside, breaks a tackle. Take a look at this. The Doc Scott's going to be matched up. It's a matchup that John Garrett likes, and he throws it up. Look at that throw and that pinpoint throw. Deep to the outside, not to the inside. Gives an opportunity. What a catch by Zadok Scott. Such a weapon when he's healthy. One of the best receivers and mismatches in the entire league. For Zadok now in the ball game, that is his third, making his fourth catch for 66 yards. Again, sort of showing pressure in that front side A gap. He picks it up. Back firing underneath. It's going to be a catch, but it is not going to be a first down as they'll get it to the 11-yard line as the ball was caught by Jordan Hall. Lafayette definitely in field goal range right now. Looks like they're going to bring in this kind of this jumbo set. Ryan Montaigne, number 83, coming in. Jake Taggart going to have four tight ends on the field as Fordham's going to call a timeout. This is Fordham's second timeout of the half. So they definitely want to try to keep Lafayette out of the end zone if they possibly can. Thank you. So they'll put a minute and one second on the clock, and that's plenty of time for John to talk. Here he is. <laughs> Gary, you know there's an old saying nobody likes it. Never mind. Um, hey, Selwyn Simpson, you saw him. Like, you caught it. He limped off the field. That's a cramp. They were stretching him out. He'll be good to go, certainly, in the second half. Back to you guys. All right, John, thank you very much. Fordham came into this ball game with their best three receivers from last year graduated, and they uh, have added three very good receivers. Lafayette in the same boat today as yeah. their best three receivers are sidelined and will not play. And uh, give credit to Keegan Shoemaker for finding guys open. He's already completed passes to seven different receivers. He's accurate today. You know what I mean? He's really accurate today throwing the football. Started out with a couple of high throws as Lafayette's looking at a third down and one. You really want to pick this up. You don't even want to have to make a fourth down and one decision. Lafayette's got to change over. This is what they did before, and they ran the ball in that front side A gap. Got to control the double teams. Back time they went great time. They're going to run a sweep. 85 carries the football, I believe. Zadok Scott. And that's going to get down to the six-yard line. 
I'll tell you one thing. You better stay on your toes uh, with the play calling of John Garrett. You never know. <laughs> No, no matter what the, the downer yardage is. I said I wouldn't want to be a defensive coordinator, so they're going to go from that. Look at that. They went from four wide, four tight ends to four wide receivers with the tight ends. Back to throw, and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. As uh, knocking it down was Jeremy Imperati, the defensive tackle. So Lafayette will look at a second and goal to go from the six-yard line. I think I've ever seen four tight ends, basically double wing sets, or an overload surface blocking, and then you stay down on the field and you go four wides with your four tight ends. I lost you at four tight ends. Well, I mean, it's amazing. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but the ability of, of John Garrett to dictate the defense by the formation and by the by the personnel in the game. Great time for maybe a quarterback draw. Second and goal to go from the six. Sadak moved, I think, at the top. Yes, I believe you are right. Big penalty. Ball stop. Ball fans. Number 85. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Just the second penalty against Lafayette. Now for 15 yards, and it sets him back to the 11. Maybe a little more space to throw the football, but certainly uh, a little more space to maybe keep you from running the football. And if you're Keegan, you got to know right now you have a field goal in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. You just turned it over before. You had a bad throw, but you have a field goal. So if you don't have it right away, you don't want to take a sack, number one, but you don't want to throw the ball into harm's way because you're going to see zone coverage with probably an added linebacker, and there it is. Back to throw, and getting in trouble, and stepping up, and stepping out to the outside. And Keegan will get as much as he can as he'll run out of bounds at the six. So he picks up five, he gets the penalty back, only now it's going to be third and goal to go from the six-yard line. Can you say Houdini? How did he get out of that? Again, watch the linebacker's going to come, Greenhagen. Really nice job by Grunhofer just to kind of get a hand on him and pad on a pad, but... Keegan's, again, the thing about that, when you bring pressure up the middle, the first thing it does with the quarterback's eyes is it drops his eyes because he sees it. Mm -hmm. It's right. At, it's not like it's coming off the edge. So it is really throwing Keegan off a couple times. We'll see here if they try to get that one-on-one -on -one down here, maybe with Zadok Scott at the bottom of your screen. Very tough call here. And that's going to be a touchdown. Oh, my. Stepping inside and making the catch, Jordan Hall. Jordan Hall with a touchdown. And for Jordan... That is his first touchdown of his career. Yeah, that was just a beauty. You actually thought they, with the tight formation and the stack, and this is saw, something I saw them working on last Thursday and this Thursday, was the stack formation with Zadok Scott on the line, Jordan Hull just a hair step, but a tight formation, which doesn't allow you to play man-to-man, -man. and Zadok Scott runs basically the slot fade and a really nice route by the freshman Hull to get into the end zone. Trying to make it 24 to 7 is Jeff Cordenbrock. He's been perfect as he puts it up, and it is good. And Lafayette is up by a 24 to 7 score. Another look at the TD. Beautiful, beautiful job right there. The slant route. You cannot play a slant from outside leverage. And that's what this, that's all made by the split and the formation. So Lafayette. Great job by Coach John Garrett to show a bunch of different formations that in the locker room now, Fordham's going to have to come up with what do we do versus two tight ends, four tight ends, four wides. I mean, a lot of different formations to prepare for. And John Garrett looks like he's got this defense on a little bit of a string. The only time Lafayette's really stopped themselves was on the interception. And Mike, Jordan Hall. And I had to go back to check to see whether I messed up. Yep. My only stat on Jordan Hall coming into this ball game was four tackles on special teams. special teams. He has no catches and obviously no touchdowns. So his first catch as a Lafayette Leopard, as a wide receiver. Well, he got one today, so his second catch. Second catch? Yeah, as a wide receiver for Lafayette. I'll tell you what, he's got pretty good pedigree, too, because I believe his father was coaching the Indianapolis Colts. So well, he has got some good pedigree. <laughs> he's learned how to line up. He's learned how to run routes, and I believe his father is an NFL coach. I'm not sure if he's still in the league, but he was at one point in time a, an assistant coach for the Colts. And Jordan Hall, again, some good wide receivers. You saw two freshmen now catching touchdowns for Lafayette, one by Julius Young and one by the other freshman, Jordan Hall. Mayfield and Coco Sulis are back. It's going to come down to Mayfield. He'll collect this ball at the nine-yard line, and he's going to try to bring it straight up on the left side. And he uh, avoids one high tackle, but eventually will go down 
at about the 37, 38 yard line. 22 seconds on the clock. Fordham has one timeout left. So the Leopards in pretty good shape on the defensive side of the football from the 37. Yeah, you're right, Gary. They managed to get a look right there. Joe Connolly, I mean, they, they, the Leopards managed the clock as well as got the touchdown. You couldn't ask for anything more. You wanted to take that last three minutes and 14 seconds off the clock there as you get a look at Nick Pearson today, not in uniform, but the other freshmen have kind of made up for it today, putting up 24 points in that first half. Back to throw, looking for something big. They'll get a good completion to Hamzi El Zayat as he's tackled immediately by Ryan Dickens. And the ball will be placed at the 49, a gain of 12. Remember, Mevis, his longest this year is 46 yards. So you got to figure they need about 20, 25 more yards of offense. Back to throw, and that's out of bounds. So that catch will not be a good one by Carter. Clock is stopped with five seconds to go. Well, now you don't have time to actually, uh, you have one timeout left, but you don't have time to run a 20 yard pattern. So if I'm Lafayette, I'm backing my linebackers up to about 12 to 15 yards, and I'm gonna protect the inside of the field. If they wanna run something on the boundary, they can do that, but it's gonna take more than five seconds to run a 15 to 20 yard pattern. So know where the sticks are if you're Lafayette. You can see guys yelling at guys to back up, they're gonna run it. They will run the ball as they hand it off to Sneed. And Sneed is going to get to the 47 and that, that is, is going to do it. The first as the Lafayette Leopards with certainly their best half of football all year, they have themselves a 17 point lead over the Fordham Rams, 24 to seven. Coming up, we'll have John for the Farmers Insurance Halftime Report. Of course, John will try to gather up John Garrett here, Coach Garrett, before he goes into the locker room, and here we go. Th thank you, Gary. Hey, Coach, you know, we've heard you talk so often about complimentary football. It was near flaw first quarter of football. Then when the offense stubbed their toe and they dropped the ball a couple of times, the defense picked them up. you got to be pleased with how the teams are, are so cohesive. Well, it's like a marriage. Everybody says a marriage is 50-50. It's not. One day it's 90-10, other day it's 10-90. So, Will you tell me when those other days yeah, are? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that's how we talk about our team. So we always got to pick each other up, and uh, we really responded well to the adversity. You love that first half. Coach, go get him in the second half. Get that second win. Go Leopards. Gary, Michael, uh, you know, I heard you talking about other scores around the league. I got to believe there's some people out there saying what is going on in Easton. Back to you guys. Well, I agree, John. I like that marriage analogy. When we come back, John will be talking about EMS. So stay with us. Well, let's kick the ball off. Jeffrey Kortenbrock will kick it off to either Kokosoulis or Mayfield. And again, it's a very short kickoff, but it's fumbled again. And falling on it was, uh, I believe, Mayfield or was it? It was 21, Coca, uh, 21 Mayfield who yep. fumbled the football. And it will be placed <laughs> down at the 32-yard line, first and 10 Fordham. Could have been disastrous for them. You know, the ball bounces off his chest. He's trying to get up in there as quick as he can. So big, big series here for the Fordham Rams to see if they can get a little momentum, a little tempo going with this offense who leads the league in, uh, in, in offensive uh, ability to get into the end zone. Well, the first play won't false go start. off because it's going to be a false start. Is right. False start. False start. Offense, number 87. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Or as referee Steve Catterett said, it's a false start. <laughs> false start. When you get above the uh, above Connecticut, people understand that it's a false start. Park the cat next to the false start. Here's a quick toss out here, a play we haven't seen yet today, which we seem to see every single week. Ball was caught by El Zayat, and he got immediately tackled on the play by Eric Mitchell. We weren't sure Eric was going to be in there today. Good to see him out there. There is going to be a gain of five. Well, they've taken Eric and kind of put him to the field side. You can't hide a corner ever. But if you want to kind of give him limited ability to come up, make tackles and stuff like that, he's usually the boundary corner like we saw uh, Matt Smalley be for so long. Demarat back, looking, looking. He's going to drop the ball off to his running back as it is caught by number nine, and that is uh, Zach Davis. Tackle out of bounds as uh, the ball will be marked at the 39-yard line, a gain of seven. Fordham going directly to the throw here. Two throws in a row. Good protection again inside, getting the ability. You know, Zach, Zach uh, Davis, 
does a great job not only running the football, but he's got a bunch of catches this year as well. Great three down back and stay on the field on third down. And here's another third down. Yeah, big play early in this ball game. Third downs for Fordham, two out of five today. And it's gonna they're gonna make it three out of six as that's gonna be just at the sticks as the catch is made by Jack Lynch in to make the tackle Billy Schaefer. And they need it five, they got it. Exactly the same. Yeah, Filling made a great point in the halftime report of, of allowing them to have the underneath throws right here. You know, you, you, they've only got so many possessions in the second half. You don't want to risk playing straight man to man on third down and four. You give up that first down, but you use clock. And, and again, the play, the amount of plays, you want to kind of limit them to the plays as well. Back to throw, firing over the middle, wide open downfield is the Keys Carter. And Carter's going to get big yardage as the gain will be all the way down to the 32-yard line, or make it the 27-yard line of Lafayette, a 31-yard pickup. Yeah, you're in a little bit of a quandary if you're Lafayette. If you only bring three-man rush and you don't really get any pressure, you're allowing guys not to get depth right there. You see Major Jordan and Olivas, they never get any depth. They're kind of sitting at 12, 15 yards, and you got all day to throw the football. Back to throw, they got the ball again. This time it is collected by Ferraro, and Ferraro is going to go and get down to the six yard line. So that's another first down and a pickup of 22 yards. A little soft by the Lafayette defense. They brought an extra guy this time and that was Olivas again, getting to the midsection of DeMarat, but a little bit too much cushion on the outside. So Lafayette right now defensively, a little soft coming out of the locker room. The big third down uh, completion was big to keep this drive alive. Trey Sneed in the backfield, see if they decide to run the ball now. First and goal from the six. They give it to Sneed. Sneed is going to be stopped just shy at the one yard line. He'll pick up five. And a good run by him. He's a strong inside runner. I, almost like he's, you kind of see Zach Davis as a bounce guy to the outside, but that was a real nice job on the left side by Lika Portis and him and Phil Salah just to kind of open things up, get a hat on a hat and allow the running back to get in behind him as Sneed goes out and Davis comes back in. Jordan and Olivas kept that from being a touchdown. Second and goal to go from the one. So Fordham trying to strike quickly here and get themselves back in this ball game, trying to get to within 10. And the ball off, Davis, and he's looking, they can't find any running room. He gets buried out there by Lafayette's defensive left side. As a tackle made once again by Marco Olivas. There's going to be a loss of a yard on that play. It looks like he had something inside there, but Lafayette, again, does a real nice job in the interior A and B gaps, just kind of creating a wall. And you wonder if this comes down to a fourth down in one or fourth down in two, what the thought process is for the Fordham coaching staff. They need touchdowns, so I think they're in four down territory. Third and goal to go. It's Davis again. And he did not get in again. Oh, my, this Lafayette goal line stand defense has been great all year, really. Well, last time they faced the fourth down and one, they stopped it. Good job by Yasir Thomas getting up into the mix as well. Got the yard back. Fordham is the number one team in the league in fourth down conversions. They, uh, they do a great job. They are eight for nine, or excuse me, nine for 16 for 50. 6%. They're going to take the field goal here by Nevis. I don't blame him. you got to have points and cut this to a two-score lead. So this will be a eight, an 18-yard field goal by Mevis. Mevis is 10 for 14 in field goals. That was just an easy chip shot for him. And that will be good. And I don't know who you give the win here to. Do you give it to the Lafayette defense? I think you have to. They gave up a bunch of points, or should be a bunch of yards, but didn't break. So that is the definition of bend but don't break. Well, we will break. And we'll probably bend a little. We'll be back. And he certainly is one of the better kickers in the Patriot League. All the kickers have been perfect so far today. Lafayette, right here on the kickoff return, you've got to be aware of an onside kick here because you almost feel like Fordham's down a possession. They, you got to be aware, you got to make sure up on that front line that the ball goes over your head. You don't leave, your feet are planted until that ball goes over your head. That's how you teach kickoff return guys in the front line. Oh, here we go. It is end over end. It is deep and will not be returned. 
as Lafayette again will start a drive on the 25 yard line for the uh, second time in this ball game. What a weapon Andrew Vivas is to constantly get touchbacks. He leads the league in touchbacks. So uh, Lafayette will see what they talked about offensively. They showed a ton of formations. One thing they need to make an adjustment against is that vertical blitz by both Cunningham and uh, Greenhagen, guys that are coming downhill. They picked it up a bunch of times, but it's right in the face of the young quarterback and a lot of times making him drop his eyes. So we'll see what adjustments they've made against that type of blitz. Shoemaker 11 for his last 16 as he started the ball game. This play won't go anywhere. Started the ball game one for six. Well, they do end up with positive yardage as they'll get it to the 29, a gain of four. Well, you said it. He did start one for six, Gary. But since that one for six start, as you're going to watch Selwyn here, just get what you can here, Selwyn. Get it up inside. Does a good job getting away from Imperati. But after one for six, Gary, he was 11 for 15 after that and managed to put up 151 yards through the air and balance that with 130 yards on the ground. So good recovery by him with a lot of these freshman receivers making plays. Nice job there by Simpson to pick up four there. It looked like that was going to be certainly for no gain at all. Back to throw. Shoemaker looking. Now he's going to run away. Got a little bit of running room. And he's going to get popped pretty good. It's coming up and hitting him was a Ryan Greenhagen. Greenhagen is all over the field. And he'll make the tackle at the 29-yard line. No gain on the play. Yeah, and these are some of the things that you got to understand. He's lucky this ball didn't get stripped. He's got a lot of time. Just drive up into the pocket right there, and he's lucky this ball wasn't stripped from the back. And he took a big hit, like you said, from Greenhagen. Those are balls right at that point. Just throw it out of bounds and get rid of it. So here's a big third and six. See if the Leopards can keep this drive alive. Third downs, nine for 11 in the first half, which is amazing. You make her back looking and he fires and it's going to be a little bit too far intended for Steven Stilianis. So Lafayette will go one, two, three and out here to start the third quarter. What an empty possession for Lafayette. Stilianos just never got his eyes back to the football. He was trying to clear the linebacker. So they got Lafayette into that third down and long situation where they could drop the linebackers, didn't have to worry about the play action, and the linebackers get depth. They found Stilianos on the crossing route. Only the second punt of the day here by Lafayette's Ryan O'Hara. Deep to receive it is Fotis Fotis Kokosoulis, and that's not a good punt. Oh my, that's not even gonna get into Fordham territory. So Ryan O'Hara has really struggled this year, and that's a shank right there as you see John Garrett grab him on the way off, something Lafayette did not need to get the ball back in their own field position. We'll be back. And trying to make Fordham work the ball down the field, but you're giving them the ball at the 46-yard line. Here goes Snead. Hold. Snead to the outside. He does a nice job of using his blockers. And Snead's going to get popped out of bounds, but not before a big game. He'll pick up 12, 13 yards on the play as a Major Jordan is there to make the hit. Yeah, it looks like they got away with a couple of holds. Look at the middle right here. Grayson just getting... Grayson's just getting tackled by the left guard. And then the hold on the outside here as well, right there on Eric Mitchell. Two hold calls missed by the officials there in the open field. And again, hand the ball off up the middle, goes Trey Sneed. Sneed will get to the 30 and pick up three. Second and seven. And kind of get CF Fordham's getting like they did in the first half, get a little traction offensively. Lafayette in that first half only gave up what I call one splash play, one play over 20 yards. And they've done a good job against all the uh, the deep throws in the last couple weeks, turned back about six of them against Bucknell, and one of them today down the field. Fordham's had two of those splash plays. Oh, there's a big play. Right up the gut comes Malik Ham. And I think, Mike, it's again where he's playing on that nose guard position. Yeah. I, I talked to him right in, in preseason, and I said, listen, they're going to move you around a little bit. He said, yeah, they're going to do that. But when you put him, you got to find the weakest blocker, and you got to watch him. He's right here. He runs from the left to three technique, comes underneath. So Lafayette putting a little bit of pressure on. Nobody blocks Malik Ham, and really nothing there for Tim DeMarat to do as they bring up a huge third down here for Lafayette. I think Fordham's in four down territory, so you want to be able to give up something underneath. As you see, uh, you see some guards and tackles saying he's your man. No, 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 he's your man. 
and Malik back on the nose again here. See if Lafayette can put again, put some pressure on. You don't want to give up 14, 15 yards here. Comes the pressure. They're going to go deep. Downfield, they have a man. And it's going to be intercepted. Oh, no. Almost intercepted by Isaiah Thomas. He had a beat on it and could not quite come up with it. Ah, uh, YT, you're a former wide receiver. you got to catch that football, my friend. Boy, he had a beat on that one, but he let it get into his chest, and that allowed the wide receiver to knock it away. Look at you, see, he's got a beat on it. Oh, catch that football, number one. He's got to be so angry with himself. And they will punt the ball away as a Chris Webb is back to receive the punt. Boy, that's a very high punt. And they will down it at, well, you can't jump forward for another yard. They'll down it at the four-yard line. Yep, just inside. 36 yards. We are back. There's the score. There's the Lehigh Valley. And Lafayette will have the football, but deep in their own territory, a 36-yard punt put the ball on the four-yard line. And the Leopards with their second, second half possession. Nice job by the defense there as yep. Lafayette had given them the ball on a very short punt at uh, the Lafayette 46 yard line. And a big sack by Malik Ham. He's played a terrific game. And a dropped interception there by Yasir Thomas, which would have given the ball the Lafayette back out at the 20 yard line. But uh, going to catch that football. I know he's going to be upset with himself, but he's played a good. Good half so far. Played a great game last week as well. Yazir Thomas has yeah. probably stopped two touchdown passes. Yes, he has. He's the captain, and he's making plays today with uh, his buddy on the other side, Nick Pearson, not being able to go today. Freshman Jade Sutton is in the backfield with freshman Keegan Shoemaker. Let's see if Lafayette can pop a run here and get a first down. Got to get at least one first down on this drive. Run some clock and get out of the shadow of this goal line here. And keeping the ball is Shoemaker. Shoemaker to the outside. Shoemaker gets a yard on just about every step as he'll take the ball up to the eight or nine yard line. They're going to mark it at the nine. It's going to be a five yard pickup. John Keegan came out of that first half. He had 37 yards rushing in that or first half. 38 yards, excuse me. And 45 of those actually he had one sack for a seven yard loss, which he took. But he's been pretty active with his legs. And again, that was a designed run. But one of these receivers is going to have to create some separation and pop loose. Cooper Wise in on that last tackle. Second and five. Back to throw. Good protection. Has a man wide open. Zadok. Oh, my. It's a Doc Scott again. It's a Doc to the 45 40. He may run away from everybody. He's going to. Oh, my. Lafayette touchdown. 91 yards. Oh, my goodness. Can you say mismatch? I mean, he just gets into the cushion of the defender. You can't do that. He's not a tight end. He's half and half. Watch him get vertical on the safety, runs right on his toes, and then gets behind him. And then you see the ability of him to separate away from Parker Spillers, the DB. Just a gorgeous play there. Great play call. Again, John Garrett's got it going on today, and he's got Zadok Scott in his pocket over 100 yards receiving. 242 yards in the air today for Keegan Shoemaker. What a huge play. It's down. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Lafayette 31. Fordham 10. The drive, two plays to go 96 yards, 91 of those from Zadok Scott. He's got five catches for 157 yards. Oh, my. He, he's just a guy you, you have to, to uh, game plan for him. You can't allow. He starts this play as a, as a wing, basically off the tight end as a wing. Good protection off the play action. You run that ball on first down. And then Zadok Scott's been behind the defense twice today. He's made big, big plays. You know, last year, Gary, he wasn't healthy. He just was not healthy, and he wasn't healthy early in this year. But when he is, he's one of the best in the league. Do you think somebody just messed up on coverage, or he ran out because trying to catch up to him was Parker Spiller, but he wasn't even close? Well, I think the one thing you got to give a lot of credit today to is the is the coaching staff. They've outformationed this team a bunch of times today. Well, the last longest pass, Nick Pearson, 80 yards this season from Keegan Shoemaker. 
But that one of 91 yards, we're going to have to go back in the record book and try to figure <laughs> that one out. And Coach Garrett will tell you, you know, you score quick. You don't take time off. We always say, hey, you got to own the clock. Got to have time of possession. And we talked to him about a couple weeks ago, and he said, well, what happens if you score quick? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with scoring quick there, Coach Garrett. And that, I'm telling you what, A-plus for him today so far. He's out formation this team. He's out coached this Fordham team on defense, and he's really put it to him. as less a flag down here. I wonder if that's a delay a game. Illegal substitution Rockwell. on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. It will be a free kick. I'm not quite sure what that penalty was. Illegal substitution. Substitution? What does that mean that you have? Correction. There is no foul. Okay, no foul. <laughs> well, this is a... Uh, a team that's got to cover kicks here, and they've done a good job of it today. Corden Brock's been kind of approaching the ball like he wants to kick it deep, and then he takes that little stutter step, and he's been popping it right around the 25 to 30 yard line on the Lafayette sideline, trying to cause some fair catches. End over end, will come down to Mayfield. Mayfield will get it at the 15 yard line. And he's got some running room, and he does work his way right into the belly of Ty Haranica. And let's take a look at the Leopards here, and in particular, Malik Ham. Well, he's got five sacks against this team in two years. He's a sophomore. I mean, you've been waiting for him to turn it loose all season. You see him get in. He not only makes sacks, he makes tackles for losses. You can't handle him inside. Against Patriot League of Foes, he just turns the juice up. He started the season very slow this year. Not a lot of sacks. Everybody's like, what's wrong? Nothing wrong with Malik. He's getting it done right now. He was getting a lot of double teams and a lot yep. of attention. That was another hold inside. Zadok uh, Scott, of course, with the big ball game today. There's a catch by Joe Ferrara. And Ferrara will catch it down at the 39-yard line. That's a quick 16-yard pickup. And again, Lafayette trying to give things up underneath. They brought some pressure there. Olivas was getting held again. No holding calls against this Fordham offensive line. They've held a couple times. No calls. And the ball off, looking to make a cut, stutter stepping his way forward as the tackle is made by Marco Olivas. Mayfield carried the football, number 21 in there, and he picks up a couple. Good run there. Just to get, you know, you get a second down and eight, but you got to mix in the run if you're Fordham. You have to stay somewhat balanced here and just try to put drives together, but you need touchdowns, not field goals. Back to throw the ball, and it'll be a good catch, this time in the stomach of Dick. He was out of bounds. Dickies Carter. Now he's going to call it off because he, I thought he was out of bounds. He never came down in bounds. And John is questioning that right now as uh, they'll put the ball at the 25. That's a gain of 12. You, you got to come down in bounds, and, and it looks like they never came down in bounds there. The tackle was made by Ryan Dickens. They're going to leave it, let it stand. From the 25 yard line. And yeah, maybe not now. Now they're going to. Yeah. Ruling on the field was a completed pass. Previous play is under further review. Let's we'll get another look at it here. In college football, you only need to get one foot down. But you have to get a foot down. Let's take a look at that right foot as Ryan Dickens carries him out of bounds. Yeah, and that right foot is down. That's a really nice call there by the headlinesman. Never thought, you know, Ryan kind of caught him in the air and tried to take him out. If you take him out of bounds there, it's an incompletion. But that, that play is going to stand there and a really nice throw and reception. Ryan Dickens trying to get under it. They had over-under coverage, but a beautiful throw there by Tim DeMorant. Sometimes our coverage is just too good. You know, Sometimes. our guys get all the shots, and that was a perfect shot. You know what What guy used to tell me all the time is, after review, you get so upset. Moving on the field is confirmed. Yeah. First and ten. You get so upset Four. when the other team makes a play. But you know what? The other team, they got players too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <but laughs> there's a reason that these kids play FCS football, and that's a gorgeous throw and catch. Here's John. Thank you, Gary. Might be a little too early for this, but remember, Fordham makes its money running the football. They're down three scores. There's time left, but I heard you say it, Michael. they got to have some balance, but eventually they're going to have to throw the football if Lafayette can make them take up a little time now. Back well, to you. They only have 64 yards on the ground at the moment. Yeah, both Sneed and, and, uh, and Davis out of the game now in it. Running back is Naeem Mayfield, but mostly a kickoff return guy for them. He did come in averaging almost five yards per carry, but... Now they're going to throw a quick one out here. Nice stutter step that time by Fotis Kokosoulis. And the tackle is made by Eric Mitchell. 
And the gain will be to the 23 yard, uh, check that, to the 18 yard line, a gain of seven. Yeah, well, I spent all week trying to pronounce his name right, make sure I get Kokosoulis' name. He hasn't caught the ball a whole, a whole lot there. Billy Schaefer came up, missed that tackle. Got to keep your feet moving. Once you get your feet stopped as a defender, it's so uh, tough to kind of end up leap, uh, lunging at defenders that time, missed tackle. That's his first catch of the ball game. And the ball off to Mayfield. Boy, when they need a yard or two, that's when Lafayette's defense has been at its best. As uh, coming up and making that stick, Major Jordan again. Major Jordan, what a season he's had. Yeah. Leads the team in tackles. Came in with 73 of them, and he's probably closing in on 10 again today. Yeah, he does a good job getting off of blocks, you know. Not the longest of arms, but he does a good job locking out. He's powerful in the torso and in the upper body and had a slight injury early in the year, but He's come back great against it. And again, he's a kid from North Schoolkill. And you and I talked about the young man that got hurt from North Schoolkill last night on a high school game. Major was a great running back in high school. Yes, he was. Rolling, rolling, looking, firing. That's a first down. So Demorat with the throw. He completes it to uh, Joe Ferraro, who is hit by Billy Schaefer at the 12-yard line, a gain of six. Well, it's been pretty good in the red zone, but this is just a really nice job of getting out, getting away, and receivers getting some separation there. But again, Lafayette's willing to give up the underneath throws. And in these short yardage situations and in the red zone, Lafayette's been pretty good today. See if they can come up with some sort of maybe a tip ball or a sack here. Last time we saw Malik Ham is not in there right now. That's movement up front. And that's going to be, uh, again, against Fordham. And this time it'll be uh, Nick Zakel, the left Full tackle. Slot, offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> well, both times we've called somebody First besides down. Portis. It was 72. It yeah, was 75. It was <laughs> so they've given it twice to Portis. Yeah. We didn't think either one was against him. Well, let's take a look. It's, it's 75. It's the left, the left tackle there, like they said. It was Nick Zakel. Zakel. Movement up front. Opportunity here. See if Lafayette brings pressure. From the 17, first and 15. Back to throw. DeMarat is going into the corner of the end zone. And it's dropped. That should have been a catch. Yazir Thomas was there. The intended receiver was Fotis Kokosoulis. And that one, Mike, he should have had. Yeah, that ball was probably put exactly where it needed to be. But again, the makeup speed of the uh, of Yasir Thomas there, just gets in there and gets a hand. He pulls down the front arm, makes that a tough catch for Kokosoulis. So Lafayette now with a second down and 15 here defensively. I kind of feel like they may try to get the ball underneath here, like a check down if they don't have it. Lafayette in a two deep shell, gonna be a check down probably. There Quickly it is. over the middle, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So somebody coming up the middle, I believe Malik Ham, because he's been camping out in the middle of the football field on the defensive line. He may have gotten the paw up. Oh, he's a nightmare as a nose guard. I mean, how, how, you put him in there, look at him, watch him come down underneath here. He finds the football, gets his hands up. That's the tip ball that we were looking for there. Just fell out of the reach of any Lafayette defender. You know, it's time, I think, for a guy like Keith Earl to make a play. He's a guy in these big third down situations that seems to have the best get off. And I talked about that on Inside the Huddle. A guy that can get off the ball quick, beat his defender. And Lafayette's going to bring some pressure, it looks like. You see some of those little penalties that have hurt Fordham. They're going to fire over the middle. And it looks like a good catch. That is going to be a good grab for Keith Carter. As coverage by Deron Gilbert, not quite there soon enough, and that's going to be a 17-yard touchdown catch. Yeah, Lafayette played a little zone behind the four-man rush, and really nice catch. That ball was actually behind DeKeese Carter. And Romeo Weichel is right there on his back and almost gets the separation. You see the depth right there. Major Jordan, we know he can come forward and make tackles. He's got to get a little bit more depth, get his head on a swivel. Try to get in that throwing lane, but you see how quickly Fordham can strike. So the extra point is up. It is good by Mevis. And that pulls Fordham back to within 14 with 147 to go here in the third quarter. And it was Romeo Weichel with the coverage and just the hair late. As for Carter, that is his third touchdown catch of the year. 
And for quarterback De Marat, his 14th touchdown throw of the season. Yeah. Nine nine plays to go 55 yards. Yeah, they haven't been good on third down today for him, and that was a third down and long, and that's one Lafayette doesn't want to give up. All right, let's go back to the trivia question, see if you were paying attention to the pregame. As it's brought to you, as always, by St. Luke's University Health Network. Last time a Lafayette team had 200-yard rushers, it was last year. In this game against Fordham, who are the two running backs? I know you know, Mike. Well, yeah, and we're seeing one of them today at 66 yards in the first half in Selwyn, and then one of the most electric uh, running backs Lafayette's had in the last couple of years, C.J. Emile, just a terrific. Look at that, 133 and 112. We've got to see if we can get Selwyn going again here in the second half with Jaden Sutton a little bit. Lafayette now just a 14-point lead. A drive took three minutes and 54 seconds. Returnable. Touchdown. This one is returnable. And Younger has it, and Younger is going to get up to the 21 or 22-yard line. And Lafayette will start this drive. Tackle is made on the play by Naeem Mayfield. And an important drive here for Lafayette's offense to take some clock and change some field position. They scored really quickly on the 91-yard touchdown pass to Zadok Scott, but you want to definitely get this game into the fourth quarter here. Both teams with three timeouts left. Every drive for Lafayette's important just to take clock, get first downs, not make any mistakes here. And uh, the short passing game and the running game of Selwyn Simpson is going to have to try to take this over. Zadok with quite a day. Five catches, 157 yards. Hand the ball off. And making something out of nothing. The hole opened up a little late. The patience of Selwyn Simpson managed to get him to the 25, a gain of three. And good penetration on that weak side there by number 90. Mike Marinelli did a good job kind of stopping that play in its tracks, but a good cut by Selwyn Simpson. This offensive line for Lafayette's done a good job today. I think a couple of the, uh, the ill-advised throws and a couple of the things for Keegan have been kind of holding on to the ball and Got to be aware of Greenhagen and Cunningham on the straight dead pressure, and here it comes again. This is good yardage. This is get the ball up to the 30, 31 yard line. Tackle is made by James Biggs Frazier. And here we go again. Plenty of big third down plays in this ball game, as that will be a pickup of six, and it's third and one. Lafayette's going to bring in their big package again. Four tight ends in the game here. I'd like to see maybe if you can pop a quarterback sneak or something in there. You know that uh, Fordham's going to sell out here. Lafayette has shown a couple different plays. They've shown the speed sweep by Zadok Scott, and they've shown the vertical running. Nobody the over center Sutton. there, Mike. Maybe the sneak is the play. Yeah. Instead, they'll turn around, hand it off. That little stutter step will get them the first the down. Flag. But there's a flag down, and it's going to be against Lafayette procedure. Oh, my. False stop, offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Third penalty, 20 yards. That one's big. Yeah, that brings it, makes a third and one into a third and six. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Zadok Scott on the left side here. Now, it wasn't on Zadok. It was on Jake Taggart. It was on 87. So you take a look right there. Zadok Scott was not on him. That was on Taggart, but it definitely was a good call. Makes a third and one into a third and six which makes it a much tougher call, but they'll let the clock wind down. They'll head into the fourth quarter with a 14-point lead. 31-17 Lafayette. I know you won't go quarter. anywhere. We'll be back. Right here, a very important third down. Third and six. From the 26. Yeah, keep your eye on Zadok Scott. He's down here at the bottom, right on the hash in that tight formation. And a miscommunication as it was intended for Julian Spigner. Coverage was supplied by 29 Parker Spillers. And the Leopards gonna have to turn it over and they need a good punt here. They have not punted the ball real well today. Two punts for an average of 26 and a half yards. Now Ryan O'Hara's really struggled. Just a freshman in there and he's got to know when he's got time to kick it and know when he's got to get it out. And last time he had a, a good amount of time and he just shanked it off the side of his foot here. Need a good snap, good kick, get it out. Take your time, better kick here. Much but. better, good hang time. Mayfield will call for it at the 39 yard line. 
That will be a 35-yard punt. And as the official has been saying so often, it's a media timeout. We'll be back. Here we go. You know, 14.50 yep. to go, fourth quarter. The Leopards up by 14. Now the, the Jonas falls onto the defense here. They've got to get yep. the job done. They've got to find a way to create a three and out or at least take some time off the clock here, get the football back. You can't allow Fordham to get into that tempo where they can score points. And this is a team that beat Georgetown on the last play of the game on a fourth down at 17. So uh, you win the quarter, you win the game. And that's basically what you got to tell your team. Win the quarter, win the game. Coming into here, the Leopards had only given up three points in the second half in the Patriot League. And in that third quarter, they only had ten plays total. Two of those were punts. Zadok Scott with the big play. And they're going to try to match it with a big play here. And that's going to be a good catch as the Keese Carter downfield and the tackle made by Eric Mitchell. But the Keese Carter with a big play all the way to the six yard line, a 55 yard completion. Lafayette with the one on one coverage. Looks like they brought five guys, but just too much time for Dean Rat to throw the football. And he recognized he had the whole middle of the field open. No free safety, and he just led him out into clean space. And Dakeese Carter just got on the inside hip of Eric Mitchell, who's nursing that hamstring. Looked like Eric was up to the task to get there. He just couldn't break it up. Fordham's MO all year has been to have great second halves. They're gonna, that ball again tipped as uh, it is an incomplete pass as uh, coming in there to make the play for Lafayette. It was it was 55 in there. Yeah, that was Jair Stevens. Yeah, Jair freshman. got his hands up. And yep, another freshman in there getting some playing time. He's a big kid, 6'4", 215 pounds. And Lafayette's probably going to sell out here. Got a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. And for De Morat, it's, it's find the matchup that you like. You see the corners for Lafayette visiting. In other words, two corners for Lafayette on the same side. And that should spell out man-to-man -man for the quarterback. Keep your eye on the tight end as well. Second and goal to go. They'll fire it here. Touchdown. Ball is caught by Hamzi El Zayat. And that will get this team, if they make the extra point, back to within seven. Six-yard touchdown catch. 61 yards and three plays. Oh, disappointing right there. The long pass down the middle of the field and then good job getting separation, like you said, by Zayat. Just one-on-one -on -one coverage. He runs the stick route. He gets up into the in the uh, into Eric Mitchell, two yards into the end zone, and then breaks it out. And no pressure there for Lafayette in Demarat's face. So Lafayette looking at the possibility. You just don't want to give up that big score, and they're hanging on by a thread right now. <laughs> Kick is up, and the kick extra point is good, and it's now a seven-point ball game, 31-24. Don't go away. Simpson is back. Younger is back. And the kickoff will come from Andrew Beavis. He's been solid. He's been putting the ball into the end zone, and I think uh, Lafayette will not run this one back. Start another drive at their own 25. Touchback after touchback. They've only had one chance to run a kickoff back. And it's another area where Lafayette has not excelled. They've, they've given no. good field position with short kickoffs. Yep. Yeah, and, and right now, you know, they're going to something in the offseason they're going to have to look at. They don't have a, somebody like uh, they had in the years past with Bissell and some of these guys that could put the ball through the end zone, but they're, uh, you can't continually give up short fields and, uh, you know, starting the team at the 30, 35 yard line and then punting the ball. It's going to be another situation they're going to have to look at in the offseason. First and 10 from the Lafayette 25. Selwyn Simpson in the backfield with Keegan Shoemaker. And they're blitzing again. Back to throw. They picked the blitz up nicely. Now you got to find somebody. Keegan finds some running room, and he's going to get to the outside. He's going to get more yardage. Wow, That's good a run. late hit, too. That's a late hit on Greenhagen. Six yards out of bounds. You got to call that. And you can't let a guy tackle you on the white. It's the fourth time I think Fordham should have been called for something. Watch, he's going to get, out, you know he's going out of bounds, so he's going to step out of bounds, and then the, the hit's made four yards. That's a late hit. Gain at 16. I'm a little bit of a whiner, but that's a late hit. <laughs> that is a late hit. And he is a bit of a whiner. I've been oh, yeah. around the block. I enough. admit it. From the 41, first and 10. Down number 16 for the Leopards. And the ball off, Selwyn Simpson. 
Hopkins does a nice spin job as he'll get a couple of yards before James Biggs Frazier uh, hangs on along with uh, Johnny Picnic. You got a player down there, Garrett, right around the 43-yard line. And that is a Fordham. And one of the D linemen, I think. See if we can pick it up. Selwyn had a little bit of a hole right got there. Two. And down on the ground, I think it looks like it might be DeAndre Carter, 98. So Fordham rolling in a couple of different defensive linemen as well. I think it was Carter. Carter, Carter is Carter. slow to get up. As you get a look at Selwyn Simpson. Selwyn out of Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, 6'2", 235 on the day, 79 yards, averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry, and a touchdown. His longest run of the day, 24 yards. And second and eight. The big guy for Lafayette has been uh, Z Zadok Scott. See if they maybe can find him again here, second down and long. Back to throw, quick out. Well, they don't get much. They'll get the ball to the 46. That's just a gain of three yards as uh, that one caught by Zadok. Well, biggest play of the game right here for Lafayette to keep these chains moving, get this under 10 minutes if they can convert this third down. Remember, they had a third down and one where they had some movement up front by the tight end Taggart, which caused a third down and six. And I think Keegan right here, you know, he's, he's had the ability to use his legs. They're going to bring pressure. One of those linebackers is coming right up the middle. you got to be aware of it. They need five yards. Back to throw. Good protection. Trying to find somebody. Find, that's going to be a first down. If they mark it properly, well, they, they will not. They're going to say he's a yard shy. He actually caught the ball, did uh, Stilianos, and then took kind of a step back when he got hit. So they're going to get four. They needed five. It looks like Lafayette might go for this fourth down and a half a yard. That might be something you want to look at. Look like Stiliano's caught the ball right there way ahead of the 50-yard line, maybe not the 49, but the question is the act of him coming back for the ball. They took it away from him. Lafayette looks like they're going to at least try to line up here. You wonder if they're going to go with a hard count. Quarterback under center. You could go quarterback sneak here, maybe. Talk about a big play. Can they keep the ball in their possession? Up by just seven. Turn around, go. hand it off. No, they will not get the first down. Oh, my. So the ball and momentum shifts back as that hit was made by Glenn Cunningham. Who else? If it's not Cunningham, then it is usually Greenhagen. The linebacker comes up big, no gain. Now they came under a block as well, so both teams coming up big on fourth down. Watch, he's right in the middle of your screen. He stays patient. He sees the hole open up just as the running back does. The running back sees a good block there by Grunhofer, but he's got to handle Greenhagen. And then you see Glenn Cunningham basically read it just as a running back would. He found the lane, and he met Jaden Sutton right at the spot. Well, this is Fordham's fourth make it their fifth possession. They have scored on three of them. Back to throw, getting some pressure, running around and throwing it away. As uh, saving some yardage was De Marat. As he's out of the pocket, he's allowed to do that. Yeah, he went right after at that time. Lafayette not sitting back. They came and brought the pressure. And every time they've done that, again, they've moved De Marat off of his spot. And I think you got to continue to do that and put the pressure on your secondary Secondary's been pretty decent today for Lafayette, and, uh, but that one big splash play has changed this game all the way around, made it a one-score game. Sneed's in the backfield on a second and ten. And play zone here, Lafayette. Demarat throws it down, and that's going to be a completed pass. That's, you see what Demarat's done the last 17 passes before that one, so he's 13 for his last 18. And he's fighting that rhythm again. Like, uh, again, that looked like Malik Hamp just a step late getting there. You see Malik flash right here at the end. And Lafayette just giving up a little bit of a uh, cushion there. Third down and three. And again, I think Fordham's in that four down territory here. You wonder if they don't pick this up, if they're willing to maybe punt it in deep and play a little field position here in the fourth quarter. I would think the way they played the second half, they would punt the ball away, but let's hope they have to think about that. They do not. They drop the ball into the hands of DeKeese Carter. Carter turns it upfield as he's knocked out of bounds by Weichel, and Mitchell is over there. 
as uh, the gain to the 30 is a 13-yard pickup. Yeah, Lafayette on the zone coverage on the backside. You see right there, Ryan Dickens turns his hips to the inside, and that opens up to Keese Carter in the flat. Easy pickup there on third down and short. First and 10 from the 31. They now are six for 11 on third down. Two for five in the first half. So they certainly have improved the offense here in the second half. Lafayette needs a sack, needs a tackle for a loss. Hand the ball off to Trey Sneed. And Sneed is going to get a first down before he takes a lick at around the 20 or 19 yard line. That'll be a gain of a dozen. So offensive line doing a better job here in the second half. Watch Phil Salai right there in the middle, the center. And the good just blocking up front. Tackle by Keith Earl. The defense on their heels right now. Someone's got to make a play. Demarat back. All kinds of time. He went through his total, all of his progressions there before he found the Keith Carter open. Tackled by Major Jordan. Mikey must have looked for all the way from the right side yeah. of the field all the way over to the left side of the field. Gain of nine. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the, the fact that Lafayette just is having trouble getting home with that three-man rush, they're going to switch a couple guys now, bringing Ryan Barnett in. See a couple missed tackles in the field today by Ryan Dickens. He's playing kind of out of position. I mean, he's usually that inside Mike linebacker or Sam linebacker, but they got him playing the will, basically the weak side outside linebacker today. Got to play in space when you're out there, a little more difficult. On the 10, they need a yard. Sneed in the backfield. Not seeing much of Zach Davis. Oh, bad snap. And there's a flag, too. Probably going to be a false start here. It's a, it's a snap infraction, it looked like to me. Mm -hmm. That's a five-yard penalty remained. Second down. That's Salah had the ball kind of get trapped on the turf. Yeah, big penalty there, too. They seem to get one every time they get down in the 10-yard line. Well, how, how can it be second down and four, second down and five, if it was a five-yard penalty? That's not, that ball doesn't look like it's spotted here. I agree. It should be uh, back one more yard. You here you can look so. at what uh, DeKeese Carter has done in this game. Comes the pressure, Lafayette bringing pressure. They do not get to wide open. Oh, my. Nobody, nobody is there with the coverage on Jeff Cicio. Jeff Cicio gets his first catch of the day, and there was not a leopard within eight or nine yards of him. Yeah, nowhere around, blown coverage by Lafayette. That's the tight end. You're gonna line up right here on the left of your screen. He goes vertical, you see the freshman there work into the middle of the field. That's Deron Gilbert. Somebody made a mistake right there. You had the corner up and the safety rolling to the middle, and then uh, left kind of Ryan Dickens playing the curl area. Nobody in the back corner of the end zone there, blown coverage by Lafayette. The 21 point Lafayette lead has disappeared. We are tied 31-31. We're back as you get a look once again down on to Fisher Stadium. Beautiful shot by the drone, beautiful day. It was a much prettier day though, Mike, when it was 31-10. Not quite as attractive at 31 all. Well, you go up 24 to seven and then you go down 24 to seven. And, uh, no excuses here. You want to win this football game, you got to go out and take it. Fordham's not going to give it to you and Lafayette offensively has basically had one big play in the second half. The 91-yard touchdown to Zadok Scott. They just haven't had any other offense, and they're struggling to get first downs. Short yardage, they went for the short yardage play on uh, fourth down and one at the 50-yard line. Didn't get it. Glenn Cunningham with a big play. And then the false start play against Lafayette when they picked up the first down back around the six-minute mark of the third quarter set a third and one into a third and six, and uh, they couldn't convert that either. So the nine for 11 on third downs in the first half has gone by the wayside. Now Lafayette. Uh, they haven't gotten one yet. Nope. Nine for 14, they're 0 for five. They're 0 for three in the second half. Yep. They had a one, two, three and out. They had a one, two touchdown. One, two, three and out. One, two, three, four and out. They're, they're pumped up on their sideline, and there's a reason to be. They're, they're scoring right now, and they're putting it to the Lafayette defense. Lafayette doesn't blitz 
on defense. They're struggling. The question is if they blitz, they got to hold up in the secondary, and they've had a few mistakes back there in the secondary today. DeMarat with three touchdown passes here in the second half. And in the last three possessions, he's had a 17-yard touchdown pass, a six-yard touchdown pass, and a 14-yard touchdown pass. And you can almost guarantee the Leopards will start this drive on their own 25-yard line. That has been the strength of the leg of Andrew Beavis. Younger's back. Simpson is back. Doesn't matter. This ball is going to be 11 yards deep into the end zone. From the 25 now, Lafayette has to regroup. Lafayette needs to put together a drive. 8.17 on the clock. And all the momentum right now belongs to the Rams of Fordham. You said it, Gary. That was taking the words out of my mouth. Lafayette's got to put down. You know, it, it comes play after play, building block after building block. And you now if Lafayette doesn't convert a few first downs, and this is a step backwards for them offensively, but they got to find a way to continue to balance the run with the pass. And in that first half, they were 9 for 11 on third downs. And like you said, Gary, had not converted one here in the second half. From the 25, they will hand the ball off. A little bit of running room and doing a nice job of finding the space. As Simpson carries the tackle made by Biggs Frazier, and it's a gain of six. Yeah, the difference in this game could be the legs of Keegan Shoemaker. You see a good move there. Got the ball in the right hand, gets vertical. Selwyn Simpson's done a good job. That's a great first down play for Lafayette. You got to find a way to get a big splash play here. You got some young wide receivers, Jordan Hull at the top. You got Julius Young down here at the bottom. Simpson closing in on 100 yards. He's got 87 on the ground. Step Back up. to throw. Fire. Ooh, is that pass interference? It is not. Coverage was supplied by. Keegan by Blair. Shot too. Keegan took a shot right at the top of that play. And Lafayette again faced with a third down and four. Huge important play here. You wonder if they could maybe go back over the middle here, try to find Taggart, try to find Julius Young or something. They only need five yards. And again, they're going to bring pressure here. So Keegan's got to be aware of the pressure coming up the middle. If you're Fordham, you, you want to get this ball out of his hands quickly, maybe see if he can make a cause some sort of mistake, just a four-man rush. Back to throw. Now looking to get out of the pocket and throws the ball too far. And the flag way downfield, so you wonder if that might have been a hold. Yeah, that would really be a big call against Fordham. I think it's going to be against Fordham. Jordan Hall was the intended receiver, and the ball thrown beyond him. When the officials get together like that, though, sometimes they negate it. Let's see. There was no foul on the play. It'll be fourth down. Oh, yeah. So you throw the flag, and then you pick the flag up. That's that's very odd to me. So Lafayette's going to have to punt this football away. They have two first downs in the second half, one of them on the 91-yard catch. Let's take a look here. The question is, you know, right here as it goes inside, it's right at the top there on Julius Young. Oh, my goodness. And they tackled him. I mean, he knocked him to the ground, and the call was made. And how do you pick the flag up after you make the call? It just baffles me. Time's officiating. Kokosoulis is down. back. The O'Hara punt is high. Fair catch is called for and collected right at the 40-yard line. 29-yard punt. Not good enough. Just not good enough. Got to find a way to get first downs, and Lafayette's offense has gone completely dormant here in the second half. Very disappointing for them. They got to find a way to regroup, make a play defensively, make a play offensively, and whoever does that is going to win this football game. The 24-7 lead, the 31-10 lead is gone. You got to right now make a play. Whoever makes a play here is going to put this game away. Well, they've got the fresh legs now of Zach Davis. He's back in the ball game. He's their leading rusher coming in, just 35 yards today. But he is fresh. He has not been part of the second half comeback. In fact, it's all been the right arm of DeMarat. Leopards need a turnover. There's a quick pitch to Davis, and he's going to maybe lose a yard. As a nice defensive play by Marco Olivas. Marco Olivas is special. Yeah, he kind of shaken up a little bit there. He's used every ounce of his speed. Unblocked to the corner there just to run down the 
guy with the speed of Davis here. Lost about a half a yard. We'll call it second and ten. Now it's time for Malik Ham to get home. Got to get a guy up the field, see if they can cause some sort of turnover or a sack. Get right back. Here comes the pressure. Oh, yes. A sack by Lafayette, and it came up the middle from Major Jordan on the blitz. And that's a huge play. Back to the 30, a loss of 10. Well, both linebackers, we, we kind of uh, talked about them at the top. Greenhagen, we talked about Cunningham, and now you got to talk about Major Jordan and Olivas. It's been a linebacker game. They bring four off the weak side. No way to pick it up. You got three guys fanning the backside. You bring four off the weak side. You see if Lafayette does. They're in a penny or a dime. They're going to run it. There's a penalty flag down. Could be a penalty you could decline here and get the ball back. Tackle is by Ryan so, Dickens, oh, but now we'll wait and see what the call is. Offsides Lafayette? Yeah, I think it's going to be offsides lining up maybe in the offside. neutral zone. Could have been Defense, the blitzer, too, nine. coming from the outside. Five-yard penalty. Third down. There's two big five-yard penalties in this half against yeah. Lafayette. One when they were on offense, and now one on defense. And that's going to give them another opportunity on third down and 15. Lafayette again in that kind of that penny defense here, three-man rush. One of these defenders has got to take a good drop. you got to make sure you understand progression of routes and not give up a lot of cushion here. You want to make sure that gets ball comes out and gets punted. Know where punted. the sticks are. Oh. Pass was to nobody. So the poorest throw of the uh, second half by De Marat. He's been spectacular. Not that time. Uh, yeah, Lafayette did a good job. They're dropping eight guys. It's tough to throw when you've got eight defenders dropping into the uh, into the route here. If he looks to his right, he might have had Coco Sulis for probably a six or seven yard gain. But Lafayette gets away with the lining up in the neutral zone. Nevis in the punt. He's been averaging 42 yards per punt. Back to receive it is Chris Webb. Fair catch. And Lafayette will have the football at the 23-yard line. First and 10 in a tie ball game with 5.43 to go. Well, it doesn't matter how you get there. It's a matter if it's a W's or W's, and uh, Coach Jack Garrett will tell you that. So Lafayette with an opportunity here if they can get the ball to midfield. You figure they probably got to get the ball down to probably the 25-yard line. The longest field goal this year, I think, has been 44 yards. That is correct. That 44-yard field goal. So first down's been good for Lafayette. They got to find a way to pick up and get some tempo going with this offense. That nothing really going this entire second half. Simpson in the backfield. Hand the ball off. And is carrying the football. Caden Sutton. And he will get no yardage on the play. Second and ten. A good defensive stand here by Fordham in the second half. Whatever adjustments they made in the second half has uh, kind of paid off. And now one of the D linemen <laughs> took a knee. But the play will play on. Yeah, Lafayette goes trips here to the bottom. Empty the backfield. Maybe tight end to the weak side. You gotta, you can see that tight end down the seam. Is it gonna be? Back to throw, looking, and now running around, and it's an oh my. Tried to throw the ball out of bounds, I'm sure, but instead throws the ball, not to Sutton. Who came up with that interception? Third, number 20, I guess. I think it was James Biggs Frazier. And that would be his second interception of the year. Yeah, well, if you see that, uh, you know, you got two guys over the top of the X receiver pre-snap. And he's just trying again, like you said, Gary, throw the ball away. And there was good pressure up the middle there by Jeremy Imperati. And I uh, almost got to think, I saw pregame, I saw Nevis kick a 50-yard field goal. So they're well within his range, I think, right now. It would be about a 45-yarder. So they'll want to take some time off the clock, get seven if they can. If not, don't leave Lafayette with very much time. That run is going to pick up a couple of yards, carrying the ball is Trey Sneed. Tackle made by Ryan Dickens. Gain of two. Well, Lafayette, you got to keep an eye on the clock as well. You got three timeouts left, so you don't want Fordham to be able to burn all of this time off the clock. You're going to need an offensive possession. 
even if they do kick a field goal, you're going to need time. Back to throw. Dimarat looking, has a man downfield, and it's going to be dropped. As the pass was intended for DeKeese Carter, coverage supplied by Romeo Weichel. Romeo never had any idea where the ball was, but he certainly put his hand up at just the right time to block the vision of Carter. Yeah, and the number one thing it does is stops the clock. Nice play by Romeo. Again, he's filling in. He played safety the entire time he's been on campus. And now he's been in the game playing that weak side boundary corner, both him and Eric Mitchell. They're without Trey Jordan, who's been hurt pretty much all year. They're without Caleb Burr today as well. Biggest play of the day. Third and eight from the 25. Got to play tight coverage here. They're going to run it. That's how much confidence they have in Andrew Mevis as the tackle was a solid one by Marco Olivas. Now they're looking at, let's see, this is going to be a 47-yard field goal. No, 42-yard yeah. field 42 goal. 42-yard field goal. Watch Olivas make a nice play here. They try to pop, pop Sneed through there. Can't get him through. But, again, in pregame, I saw this guy here kick a bomb. His longest this year has been 46 yards. So Correct. this is well within his range. Let's see if Lafayette last week, who did block a field goal, Cooper Weiss is the holder. It's down, it's up. It's certainly long enough. And it is good as it just got inside the left upright. And Fordham has come all the way back to take the lead on a 42-yard field goal by Andrew Mevis. They have left 3.36 on the clock and three timeouts. Now let's take a look at it right here. You're going to see it head on. It's going to start curving to the left. And that is good. Just inside, like you said, Gary, right inside the left upright. So Lafayette in this second half has given up 27 points and only scored one touchdown. So as good as they played in the first half, in this second half just haven't found the rhythm. And they have 336 to find it. Trying to go to 2-1, and one, trying to go to Holy Cross next week with an opportunity to High for first place. And obviously, uh, with a win over Holy Cross, they would hold the tie-breaking advantage with games against Colgate and Lehigh coming up. But it all comes down, that scenario all comes down to the final three minutes and 36 seconds. Beavis has been outstanding today. He has put, I believe, every kickoff into the end zone. Hey, look, they've given up today 17 points now in the fourth quarter. Hit with that 31 to 17 lead. Start again on the 25 yard line. The last kick he did not put in the end zone, and Lafayette started on the 23 yard line. Oh, it They've started down to this. six possessions on the 25. Yeah, and that's such a weapon you have defensively uh, as your kicker. He's part of your defense. He sets up your defense and uh, makes teams travel the entire length of the field. And a bad uh, mistake by Keegan Shoemaker. He's thrown two interceptions today. Both of them have been really poor throws. That one kind of threw, tried to throw it away, didn't get enough on it. The earlier one on the screen pass, he threw right into the defensive lineman. The Lafayette, again, you have time. You got timeouts here. You got to be able to slip a few runs in as well. Back to throw. Protection's okay, and throwing it away. Nobody to throw the ball to. Yeah, he's not climbing the pocket like he did mm -hmm. in the first half. He's always trying to escape around guys. Got to be willing to step up in the pocket and drive through it. And even if you pick up a few yards, slide, keep the clock moving. Uh, but you have timeouts, so you got to learn to climb the pocket a little bit. And Keegan's been kind of bailing a little bit today. Coming up, of course, the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club. We're hoping it's a happy post-game. We'll have our player of the game presented by Coca-Cola. Right now, second and 10 from the 25. Three over two at the top. The ball's got to go to the front side. Fire open. Good catch. The ball is caught by Taggart, who gets a few yards after the catch, as he'll get it up to the 43-yard line. Tackle by Biggs Frazier. 18-yard pickup. 18 you got yard. time. You, you don't have to go high tempo here. You got time to get things off. Lafayette usually likes to slip a run in here. They will. Carrying it is Simpson. He's not going anywhere. 
no gain on that play. Tackle is made by Johnny Pickenick. Fordham's going to give you a lot of stuff up front. Is Grunhofer, this is a big play here. Grunhofer's going to have to come out of the game. His helmet came off. Teron Hampton's going to come in for probably maybe one play here, but it looks like Grunhofer got his helmet ripped off his head. Starting center for Lafayette. Going to have to sit this play out. So we worry about snap. Second and 10. They readjust with. Zadok Scott running back to throw, looking, now getting out of trouble. Now trying to find a maroon shirt. Downfield as a man. Oh my, that's going to be a good catch as the ball thrown downfield to Jordan Hall. Coverage was supplied by Cameron Blair, but not enough good coverage all the way to the 15 yard line. That's a 42 yard pickup. Now, I thought Keegan was going to actually kind of run this football, but just at the last second, he just kept Jordan Hall in bounds. Lafayette's going to run it again here. And they're well within field goal range to tie the ball game, but they're not thinking three. They're thinking seven right now. And, and you want to take clock. Yeah. You want to take clock as well. Simpson picks up five. And you wonder if Fordham's going to start using their timeouts, knowing that they're going to need a possession probably to go ahead in this game. But Lafayette well within the range now of Jeff Gordon Brock. Oh, what a what an up and down football game. Yeah, that's why they're 18, 19 year old guys. Yeah. <laughs> Second and five from the 10. Bad snap there. And the ball off and Selwyn. Oh, he's going for the speed. touchdown. Oh, he stayed on his feet on the spin. And Selwyn Simpson goes in from 10 yards out with 148 left on the clock. <laughs> what a move. You thought Selwyn was going to go down. You know, he is a shifty runner. He's a strong runner from the hips down. Wow, what an unbelievable play. Watch the snap here. This is the key to the play. Watch the snap almost goes directly to Selwyn. It goes that way. Look at that. He actually snaps it almost yeah. to Selwyn. And then, uh, flip to him. <laughs> luckily, it was a running play called because Selwyn basically caught the direct snap that time. And that was Teron Hampton in there, I think, was still in the game for Grunhofer. The all-important extra Ooh. point. It's up. Good job by O'Malley. And it is good. It was a nice set by O'Malley. So, 38-34. Lafayette goes 75 yards in six plays. The big play to Hull. And the big play to Hull, 42 yards. To Jordan wow. Hull, the freshman for Jordan Hull today. Two catches. Make it three catches. Yep for 52 yards. Hey, we got to, Pete just pointed out, I said the halftime, I said to beat, he's gonna get push-ups there, 38 of them. I said to beat at halftime, you know, there's certain, when you're coaching and you're 24-7, there's certain things you think about is, where do I gotta get to to limit the possessions? Because the other team only has so many possessions, and Fordham, give them credit, they put points on the board on almost every one of those here in the second half, but you need to get to 38. So Pete banged me in the back here and said, Mike, you got 38. <laughs> well, you got 148 on the clock here with three timeouts for a Fordham team. The big thing here, Gary, is they need a touchdown, not a field goal. And we could use a long kickoff. That certainly would help. As Fordham's gotten pretty good field position on just about every start of drives after a touchdown. I might think about squibbing this one hard on the ground over here to the left side behind this uh, up back. Coca Coolis and Mayfield are back. It's short. It's going to be collected at the 20 yard line by Mayfield. Uh, and Mayfield makes you skip a beat a little bit too as he spins out of a couple of tackles. We'll have to pick Mike Joseph up off the floor. Well, you, you're a little, oh, uh, <laughs> you went like that. As soon as he spun out of that, he hit the B button on the Xbox and spun out of that tackle. And Nothing easy here. All right, well, it's up to the defense. Here we go. Got to make a play. And yeah. This is where Lafayette put the game away last year. They put it away last week against uh, against Bucknell. Their defensive line, you're turning it over to Malik Cam and Ryan Barnett. And i tell you what, a guy who's been kind of quiet today, Keith Earl, he usually makes big plays here. First and 10 from the 37-yard line, all three timeouts in the pocket for Fordham. Back to throw. And a flip down. that's knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Malik again. I believe it was Malik, yeah, right there. Malik coming off that weak side. Take a look at it here. 
right here. Malik coming off the left side there. Actually came off the nose. He was on the nose guard. They put Barnett into the boundary. And, uh, you know, Malik Cam did a really nice job. I think Malik Cam, yeah, great job by him getting his hands on that football and creating a second down and 10. Good get off by Earl again. That's Malik. And that's going to be a... Oh, that's going to be a completed pass. Wow. As Malik Cam was pulling the quarterback down, it will be a completed pass to Ferraro, not a first down, to the 43, a gain of six. And one thing it does do is keep the clock running, you know? And again, if you're Lafayette here, you'll give up anything underneath. You just don't want to let anybody get behind you. As you see, you see your Thomas back there, quarterback in that secondary. Here's a quick flip out here. The ball is Good caught tackle. by Kokosoulis. Coming up very quickly, make the tackle. It's Romeo Weichel. And it's going to bring up a huge fourth down and a timeout. Timeout, Fordham. This is their first timeout of the half. Great first timeout, they've got two left. Second timeout. Great tackle there. Lafayette brought pressure from the Will linebacker off the weak side, made the ball come out quickly. And that's what you want to do. Don't give the quarterback time to stay on his spot. That's when Dean Murat is really hurt. The Lafayette defense, but a really nice tackle by, watch Romeo Weichel come up. This is how you teach it. I used to call it, you always laugh at me, shoot the chickens. Watch him come up here. Fast, slow, fast, and the feet never stop. Just beautifully done, chest to chest. That's how you teach tackling right there. That's definition. And I tell you what, Romeo Weichels might have found a home for himself at corner. He's done a nice job today. They were chewing don't, the chicken. Don't bring play. it up. Don't chewing bring it up. the chicken. Shoo, shoo the chicken. Oh, you know when you get him in the barn, shoo. Come on, chickens. Oh, all right. You all get right. your hands out flat. You open your palms. You, should, you get your feet wide. When, when were you ever on a farm? I don't know about that. Shooing a golf ball in a hole, right? <laughs> hey, come on, Lafayette. Here we go. Here we go. Huge play. Minute and three seconds to go. Use one of those three timeouts. They got to get a first down, or the other two won't matter. Keith Earl trying to pump up this crowd. Watch Keith Earl at the bottom here. Watch the get off. Watch him keep his eyes on the football. Watch how quickly he gets off the football. Well, he right comes over the center, down inside, and the throw is going to be. Is it? A, no, he dropped the ball. If that pass was a little bit short, and the Leopards are celebrating. 57 seconds to go, and Lafayette with the lead and the football. Yeah, again, good pressure. Keith Earl off the backside. He's a guy you can count on, him and Malik Ham. Come up big when you have to. And this ball just fluttering. Would have been a first down there, but a little bit of pressure at the feet of D. Murat. And you see right there, that was Coco Sulis, right? Tried to make that play in his arms. Probably should have caught that ball. I think the ground once yeah. really caused that fumble. Mike, last week. When you and I got together for uh, behind the mic, and yeah. we invite you every week for that and inside the huddle, the keys where they came from behind the win. Yep. They did that today. Got a big turnover. They yep. did that today. Did that today. Stretched the field. Oh, Some absolutely. long passes. Did that today. And a big offensive performance by Keegan Shoemaker. Yep, absolutely. Spot on. So the script, building the blocks, as we said at the beginning. Here goes Shoemaker. Just make sure you hang on to that football. There's a timeout, second one for Fordham, so they're going to be able to take one more here. And the game should be over timeout after Fordham. taking a knee. This is their second timeout of the half. This is a 30-second so timeout. Lafayette probably run five, four or five seconds off the clock here on this next play. Get it down to 48, a timeout. They just need to get it to 40. Get it to 40. Well, they should be able to do take that, the you would think. Yeah. But, you know, third, you're going to, again, you're going to pick up maybe three or two or three yards here. Even if you don't pick up any yards, you, you make them use their last time out. And then the question is, uh, you know, you're going to probably have to punt the football. All right, we want to take a look at the big, big place here in the second. There were a few, but this is the one that got him back in the, with the opportunity to win this game. Mike? You said it, the feet of Keegan Shoemaker and the ability of him to keep his eyes up. But look at that job by how excited the freshman is, Jordan Hull. And then the direct snap. I'm going to call it a direct snap. To the guy with great feet. Look at that. A little bit of rooster. He used to call that the rooster. Put your hand down. Lafayette going to run the ball again here. Got to have two hands on the football. Jordan Hall came into this game without a catch. And the ball off to Jaden. There's another timeout. And there's the final timeout. So they uh, they run a play, and timeout. then Fordham cannot Fordham. stop the clock. This is their third and Just final getting back a little bit to uh, Hall. This is a 30 second Special timeout. teams, only numbers coming in, four tackles. 
He's out of Zionsville, Indiana. Wide receiver. He's a freshman, 6'2". Remember, three of Lafayette's wide receivers out today, not even playing in this ball game. Yeah. So and, Joe boy, Gillette, you count yeah. on Young. You count on Hull. Zadok yeah. Scott with a career game. Six catches, 160 yards, and a 91-yard touchdown. And Keegan Shoemaker again. You know, he throws yeah. a couple of interceptions, but he's 17 for 32, 309 yards, and three touchdowns. That, that's what you like about him. He's not going to quit. Even though he threw that bad pass, a lot of quarterbacks would go in the tank. And it, the, the, the series didn't start off real well. But go back to Jake Taggart. That a beautiful catch he made to advance the ball up to about midfield. I feel good for him. He was the guy who jumped off sides a little bit to kill that one first down. So he redeemed himself really well. Jake Taggart becoming a big target, and he made a big play on that final drive. So Lafayette could probably uh, be able to run off four or five seconds on this play, and then they're going to come up with a fourth down with probably about five, six seconds left, not even on the clock, probably four seconds on the clock. High backs. Bad snap almost. Ooh. There's Jaden again, puts his head down. At the most, he uh, had a couple of yards. Wow, there's going to be, there's a two second difference between clock and play clock. So Lafayette will take this down to one second on the play clock and call a timeout. So there's probably going to be about maybe one second left on the clock, which you could probably just run back, take a knee by Shoemaker. Mm -hmm. Uh, and kill the rest of this game. So uh, I don't think you want a long snap, and I don't think you. Uh, no, you certainly don't want to punt the football here. Now, what you want to do is probably put him under center, and then just have him backpedal three, four steps. Wait, wait, wait. Take a knee. That's what they're talking about right now. He's very happy. Selwyn Simpson. Yeah. He's doing a Sel Selwyn Simpson Time dance out. down there. Lafayette. Lafayette calls the timeout time out of the with half. three seconds this is to a go. Thirty-second timeout. Selwyn Simpson on the day, quite a game, 102 yards rushing, go. six yards per carry, a couple of touchdowns. Yep. And what do we have on the other side for Zach Davis? Zach Davis, who uh, we were really worried about coming in. Yeah. 35, 34 yards, wow. 2.8 yards per carry. A touchdown. Averaging 100 yards a game. So Lafayette did a pretty good job stopping the run. They struggled, obviously, when they left De Morat on his spot, and we knew they were going to do that. They're young in the secondary but uh you want to hear even a better number they came in averaging 167 yards on the ground yeah today 68. Yeah. just a terrific job by that defense who was really put to the test you know and they and they came up here three seconds left you're probably going to see him just run around run around watch the clock and throw it out of bounds and that's the game he's going to say hey that's an incomplete pass <laughs> look at keegan the he is so happy the leopards find themselves in a position Next week to take on the team, the only undefeated team in the Patriot League, as they'll take on Holy Cross. A win today over Lehigh. Lafayette will travel to Worcester. And you know, I didn't think I'd ever say this, but I'm really sorry we're not going. Yeah, hey, you know, it's one it's of the first times. It's not my favorite you... spot. <laughs> one of the first times you and I will not do a game from that phone booth up there, and uh, but uh, you know, we'll have to pay attention. Tell you what, we're going to have two great players of the game when we come back. All right, the Leopards win it. 34 for Fordham, but 38 for Lafayette. We'll be back. game against Colgate. The Lafayette alma mater will pause here.
So the Lafayette Leopards, a very happy bunch. Their fans on the side, a very happy bunch as they now go to two and one in the Patriot League, two and seven overall. And they've got themselves a two game winning streak. Fordham goes to three and five, one and two in the Patriot League. And Lafayette now can look ahead to their ball game next week against Holy Cross. Coming up, of course, we'll talk to head coach John Garrett. And we're going to listen in on his little post-game speech. Winning so much fun. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It sure beats the other. So now uh, John will work his way over. Coach Garrett will work his way over to uh, John Leone and our player of the game. Uh, as, as we believe, they have selected Selwyn Simpson as the player of the game. 102 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns. And uh, John will gather everybody up for a conversation. As this is the uh, post-game show presented by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. Our player of the game presented by Coca-Cola. Here's John. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I don't know, Coach, should we talk about the entertainment value of that game? But let's not do that. I think uh, L. Davis uh, was on to something when he said, just win, baby. What a great game. Can you believe we get to do this? We get to do this. This is fantastic. Boy, do we love football. And I'm uh, just so proud of our team, how we responded. We came out fast, all right, and we finished fast as well. And then we responded to adversity. Everybody stepped up. Defense had to stop them when they stopped them. And then uh, and then offense, too. And, and uh, just so proud of this group. They keep impressing me over and over and over again. Uh, it's a great win all around. Coach, I, and Sometimes it's not so much the fact that you win, it's how you win. And I don't think I've ever been this close to a football game that had this many ebbs and flows. And, and, and games have ebbs and flows. But I'm, I'm talking about dead in the water and then high is, is, is Mount Everest. Unbelievable. And, and what do you take, as a, an obvious question, but what do you take from a team like, uh, from a game like this with this squad that's growing and building? Well, you take a lot. Uh, just what we've been talking about all the time is uh, celebrate successes and embrace challenges and, and respond to adversity and just keep being the right kind of guy and the right kind of team. And uh, it, it's really not focusing on results. It's focusing on how you play and how you respond. And that's what we do. All right. And the guys has showed that today and I'm so proud of the group. It's an incredible win. Uh, like I said, coach, you're not much for, I know as a coach, you have a job to do. You're not much for entertainment value, but I'll tell you what, people who bought a ticket today got their money's worth. Well, I'm exhausted <laughs> and they cheered a lot louder than I did because uh, we had work to do, but it was a great all around win and uh, really proud of our guys. Good luck up at Holy Cross. It'll be a tough one, but hey, just another day in the Patriot League. Go Leopards. You got it, Coach. Selwyn Simpson, step in here, my man. <laughs> I'm getting to like, I've seen this show, this movie before. Uh, Selwyn, take us through the last play. I, everybody, I think, including a number of the Fordham defenders, thought you were down, but uh, you just you, you, you just kept going. Uh, uh, take us through the play, because I think it all started off with kind of a bad snap, too. Yeah, it was, a, it was outside zone. It was a bad snap, but uh, we were thinking on the fly. I caught it. Keegan told me to go, so I was running, reading it, and... Uh, at first, I felt the defender, but Coach Lundy go, always go, go, go. practice uh, telling us to put that off arm down, keep your balance, and I just did, and it was a great game. You spun around. I don't know. On Sundays, you guys are usually busy watching film and everything, but a young fellow by the name of Deshaun Watson had a similar kind of play uh, with the Houston Texans. He spun around. In the meantime, fix his face mask. When I was standing right next to you, I, I almost gave up on the play. Then I saw you put the hand to the ground right. into the end zone. You know, this is the second week in a row now, Simpson, uh, Shane, that we uh, had the opportunity to uh, uh, choose from any number of players of, of, of the game. Yeah, uh, sure. Talk about your teammates, your offensive line. They came through big time again. Offensive office line did a great job. That's two weeks in a row, and hopefully we can make it three next week. But they did a great job. Uh, on their doubles, on their singles, and everything. The holes were there, and I was just running hard. A little bit of momentum going now. You go up Holy Cross for number three. Good luck up in Worcester. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Good it. job. Congratulations, Shane. Gary, uh, that was quite a ball game down on the sideline. I'm sure you guys enjoyed it, too. Back to you. 